The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 Hello there. Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. The makers of Oreos yesterday unveiled new packaging inspired by the Star Wars franchise. The way it works is the first three Oreos are pretty good. The next three are pretty bad. And the rest, the rest you eat just because you ate the first six. Boeing announced that its first crewed space launch has been delayed again due to a helium leak in the spacecraft. The spokesman for Boeing said, come on, guys, give us a couple weeks to work out the case. We're human just like you are. Chat GPT has released a new voice assistant feature inspired by Scarlett Johansson's AI character in her, which I've never bothered to watch because without that body, what's the point of listening? Showtime! Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning. To each and every uh, damn last one of you, welcome to the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. It's going to be a big one tonight, Cubby, over there at Target Center, Game 1 of the NBA's Western Conference Final Finals. And uh, this time around, it features our own uh, damn uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. That's going to be great. I, I got my Bring Your Ass t-shirt yesterday or ordered it. At my wife's work, they had like a big... Group discount, I guess. If you bought, everybody bought shirts. So sweet. Mine's on the way. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just falling down and touching themselves over the uh, "bring your ass" movement. Um, you've heard folks talking up and down. It's been 20 years since the Wolves were involved in uh, something like this. Here, I'm going to be a mess <laughs> during this series. This is all I've ever wanted out of my life. I'm so happy for you, Nick. I appreciate that, that Smashley. That's exciting. It's I'm happy all, yet concerned as well. It's all I've ever wanted. What could go wrong <laughs> when a guy's waited 52 years for something? <laughs> Absolutely and, nothing. And then he has no control over the outcome. <laughs> what could go wrong? You know, Ashley, I don't know if you want to say anything to me. I mean, I'm 11 games into this that I have committed of my life, and I'm a big fan at this point. It, it, till they, <laughs> until they, they start losing or the regular season starts. I'm big excited fan. for you too, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For all the bandwagon fans, you know, it's, I saw an article yesterday, I forget, it was one of the local papers saying, you know, don't be embarrassed to the bandwagon. Right now it's a party bus. It's no longer a bandwagon. <laughs> Everybody's into this team. Well, a few people text in and they're not, but most people are into this team, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, like we said before, it's not just the basketball, it's just this, this group of guys. There's something special about this group of guys. They all seem like cool dudes. I did see a tweet yesterday. Um, I'm not sure what team they were referring to, but they said that their team got knocked out of the uh, of this whole situation and said they that call it the playoffs. I wasn't sure if they. Call, I, I wasn't this sure. Situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, this incident. I, I got nervous for a second. It's early. One, one and, more um, time. Give us the setup again. They said that they asked for permission since their team got knocked out of the playoffs if they could be fans of the Timberwolves and everybody was like oh absolutely we love Fairweather fans like come on. This was a social media thing? Yeah. Someone said hey my team got cooked can I come over uh, to your uh, side of things? And there's more and more sports blogs writing about international fans of the Timberwolves and not just new fans people who have watched the team who have no association with Minnesota whatsoever but whether that be Kevin Garnett or whatever reason back in the day they became fans that's very cool. It's nice when People aren't bitching at each other on social media or beating each other up at coffee shops and stuff like that. Right. People can kind of rally around one thing. Yeah. I, uh, I got to throw this at you, okay? Um, that Luka Doncic character, and if you are new to the NBA or the Timbo, well, um, you'll find out who he is pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the star player for the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic. And you've heard me complain about him before on this program. Maybe my least favorite NBA player to watch. Well, I guess check that. Uh, I forgot about Joel Embiid and uh, James Harden. Draymond but Luka Green. Doncic, pardon me? Draymond Green. Oh, I forgot oh. about <laughs> but, but Luka Doncic is certainly one of my least favorite NBA players. Now, he's an incredible shooter, and, and you'll see that in this series. Hopefully not a lot of it, but you'll see that in this series. 
Um, what I dislike about the guy is it just pisses me off to no end with the way he constantly cries to the officials and almost literally cries when he's out there and doesn't get catered to the entire time by the officials. Uh, you know, um, but I, I might finally understand after yesterday, after a message that a listener sent me, I might finally understand what's bothering him so damn much, why he is so on edge all the time. A listener hooked me up with this information. Luka Doncic, Mamel, is a super fox. Oh, really? Oh. oh, no. Yeah. And as we've noted before, that ain't easy on a pimp, is it, Josh? No, it's tough to grow. I've got a friend who his mom and older sister super foxes, and he had some issues with that. So, you know, I think, because we've talked about it before, we've gotten to the bottom of this, and it's true. I think a lot of guys carry that super mom stress and anger. Uh, did I say super mom? Super fox mom stress and anger around with them every day until the day that they die. That might be, maybe I finally understand Doncic's, his anger and his attitude. He's lived his whole life having a missile for a mother. <laughs> a listener sent me a picture. I don't know why. They just sent it out of nowhere and said, check out Doncic Mama, and now maybe I get it. I'm, I'm not going to enjoy watching the way he operates. I'm sure I'm not, but maybe now I finally get it. Well, if you're kind of half familiar with Luca, maybe this will remind you who he is. He's the guy who had a press conference last week, and there was some sexual moaning in the background. I just started sharing the ball, and our energy was great. What do you think? Uh, okay. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, uh, I hope that's not live. I actually hope it was live. To be honest with you. Maybe it was his mom. And we mentioned this when we played it last week, but that. The look on his face, how we responded to that was awesome. That was good stuff. Did it change your opinion of him a little bit? I mean, to me, that made him a little more likable. A little more human. Yeah, a little he, more human. You know, yeah. as long as he's off the court, I probably could find myself liking him. It's when he's on the court during gameplay when I get sick to my stomach at times watching Luka Doncic. But no, that was a very funny moment. The, the look on his face was, at first... Pure terror. <laughs> I don't think he recognized no, at first. A little that confusion, the, a little yeah. concern. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think he recognized at first that those were sexual sounds. I think it, for a second he thought, my, my God, someone's being attacked. And then I've had those know. moments. What's that? Where I've heard something like that. I mean, not from anyone I was with, but I've heard something like that before. And I had nine and one ready to go. I wasn't <laughs> sure if they were being murdered in a bad or good way. And then you realize, oh, it's just yeah. I, I've, I've someone getting folded uh, up. And, of course, Doncic, he's an NBA player. He's certainly familiar with the sound of women in the throes of passion. I wonder if, like, he he doesn't like pictures of her out there because I'm trying to find a picture of his mom on the Internet, and picture. it's impossible. Oh, oh it was very lot. easy. Really? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. If, Luka Doncic's mom. Yep. Are we talking about Rita? Well, I don't know her no. name. What are you doing, because sitting on your M. computer? I found pictures of his yeah. mother. And I'm the really? worst computer guy in the county, and I found pictures of his mother. I guess my computer hates me. It doesn't You'll want figure me to it see out. hot women. You'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, uh, yeah. He's got issues. Man. Yeah. Looking at she, her. Yep. Yep. <laughs> She's very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. yeah, she looks tough. younger than him yeah, somehow. She does. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. We'll, uh, we'll cover tonight's game one when uh, Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver check in with us here. Yeah, Josh, there's a picture of them on like a red carpet at some NBA award show, and I would just would have assumed that was his date or his wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how did he come out of her? <laughs> Talk about a size difference there. Oh, that would hurt. Oh, uh, Ashley, uh, is this something that you're prepared to put on 93x.com? Uh, a, a letter from Ashley here. Um, she sent it into the radio station. It says here, I'm waiting for you guys to talk about this. Someone put together a WWE-style video of the Wolves versus Nuggets, and it's hilarious. I don't know what you mean by that. I, I don't know what it is you're talking about. Um, I, they put is it difficult to describe? Yeah, It's like an AI 
kind of thing. Um, and they made it where they're, it's like um, the Wolves doing a bunch of wrestling moves on the Nuggets. Okay. It's like it, it's, it looks like you're playing NBA Jam yes. or something mm-hmm. like that, or NBA 2K. Yep, it's like that style of animation. Yeah, and yeah, they're just wrestling each other, okay. and the Wolves are dominating. Okay, it, it was after good. the Wolves beat the Nuggets, so it was pretty much like, yeah, we laid the smackdown on you, and then all of a sudden, there's Anthony Edwards giving a dude a tombstone pile driver. Yeah, they, they put this out after the second game, I think. Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. that sounds like fun. Just some teenage kid put it together in his uh, grandparents' uh, basement or something like that? Not too sure. It was all over Twitter, but uh, it was like everyone said, oh, yeah, I stole it. I stole it. You know, this is, I found this somewhere. I found this somewhere. So okay. I wish I could give credit to whoever it was. But you, you, um, you, you posted that, Ashley? Yes, I did. All right. I'd like to see that. Oh, you, it post, posted it means you've put it up on our website? Yeah, but I have to um, I have to move it up because I posted quite a few videos today. So I'm going to push it to the top so okay. it's the first link. Well, it sounds like fun. <laughs> it is cool. so hilarious. Every time I watch it, it just gets funnier. Does Gobert have a finishing move? That, oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah, he's, he's in there a couple the times, one, I think. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. he, he starts it out. Uh, he, there, there's a minion involved for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know the reference. To, at first, I thought it was Homer Simpson. Because that's a big minion that they pulled out there. <laughs> well, that's I, the best part. <laughs> I also enjoy uh, television wrestling. So you cross that over with the Tiembo Bow, and uh, I bet it's fun. Appreciate. What else is going on around here? Well, speaking of uh, our hot or not so hot mothers and fathers. Uh, What was I reading about here a day or two ago? 12% of us had our mouths washed out with soap when we were little kids. Oh, yeah, I'm part of that 12%. When you you effed up, um, I never experienced, I, I have no memory, at least, of soap being involved in punishment. Um, well, you guys have met my family. You know, we, we didn't have a lot of soap around the house, uh, <laughs> it, just in general. Uh, I don't have any memories of my mouth ever being washed out with soap by my folks, uh, but 12% of us have. Uh, and Josh, when, when that uh, punishment was dumped on you, was it because you said a, a foul word? See, my only experience would be, you know, seeing it in, on television shows, and usually if a little kid cussed, that's when he would be... Uh, Eating soap. No, it was uh, for talking back. And and by the way, my parents, their definition of talking back is a lot different than a reasonable (laughs) person's definition of talking back. It was literally talking back. Yeah, which is basically responding. (laughs) And, uh, you know, you couldn't question anything, right? If Mm. it came from the parents, it just, that's how it was. And I just had, I was was trying to clarify something, and uh, yeah, they considered that having an attitude. Well, that sounded, uh, that sounds quite unfair. So, Josh, Wapple also soap in the mouth? Oh, yeah. I bar, heard Ashley. Bar or uh, the... Uh, bar soap. Bar soap, yes. Oh. Irish oh. Spring. What? Oh. That's you... what mine was, too. It was like <laughs> wow. the, the Target brand Irish yeah. Spring. Glad totally. you guys can bond over this. <laughs> we got it in that giant, like, 14-pack or yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really liked that bar soap for a while, Irish Spring. Not that we needed to get into a bar soap argument. Ashley, I heard you saying well, <laughs> something or another. You had your mouth washed out with soap? My parents always threatened it. Um, I can't recall if it ever actually went down, but that was that was my mom's um, go-to threat. Okay, so it was hanging over your head, but you don't think they ever had the balls to go through with it? No. <laughs> so, w- Wapola, outside of the, the foaminess and, and whatnot, was, uh, for me, it was, because it was a while, right? They made me keep it in there for a while. My jaw was killing me after a while. Did you experience that as uh, well? I don't remember that, but I just remember as many times as you, like, tried to wash the soap out of your mouth afterwards, you could never do it. Oh. It was just caked in, in there. Ew. Uh, a listener has texted in um, to admit that they once ate a bar of Irish spring soap. Just for fun? Uh, They don't clarify, but it it doesn't sound that ridiculous to me. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, yeah, we had bar soap in the house, and some of it smelled so good, I considered taking a damn big bite. I did. I don't know if I had a... Uh, some bad wiring uh, for a stretch of time when I was a kid. Don't you think that Irish Spring... If I was going to eat soap, that's the way I'd go. It smelled uh, (laughs) delicious. Mm -hmm. Bar bar soap. It's been a while. 
There's always a pube on bar soap. Oh, there always. Is. At, At least one. I don't know if it just arrives that way or, or what, but <laughs> here's your pube. Pre pubed. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the chocolate on your pillow. <laughs> you just get pubed on your soap. That, uh, that brings back bad memories. Yeah, again, coming from a bar soap family. Oh, oh God, there was always somebody's hairdo wrapped around <laughs> it. Was it? I mean, grooming is different in 2024, so yes. maybe it's not as common. But yeah, back in the uh, 1980s, you're, you're going to find a pube on that thing. I prayed that it was head hair that was wrapped around the bar soap, uh, and I would always very carefully rinse it off before I started smashing it into my filthy body, but you're right about it. There was always hairs wrapped around it. Uh, crazy fish guy Jesus on the topic of bar soap being used as a punishment. His mother would make him bite down on it, and then she would scrape it back and forth on his teeth. Oh, oh dude. No. She would scrape it back and forth on his teeth to make it impossible to get out of there. Oh. Yeah, we had to bite down on it. Ah. Yeah, that's, that was for sure. Uh, more anxiety than hair Jesus called his dad a bastard, not having any idea what that meant, and he got the soap for Ooh. that. Mm. Yeah, I, I had a couple different. So this will make a lot of sense for you guys. When I was younger, it was like you were put in your room, shut the door and all that. Well, one time I locked myself in my room and my parents couldn't get me out. And I was really young. So then they were like, all right, we can't do that anymore. He's going to lock himself in his room. And then I went to the bar soap and then I got too old. So then they started taking away the video game system. Or oh. controllers. Oh, yeah, the con- hiding the controllers. That mm-hmm. used to make me crazy. Or when they would take my phone, like... Oh, you probably... spoiled little bastard. <laughs> I know, I know. you guys do something pretty Good spoiled. lord. I know, the, the, the worst way, like, the worst way I've ever treated my parents was when they would take my phone. Like, it was the end of the world. Now, if they took my phone, I would probably say thank you. Now nobody is going to bother me. Like, sweet. I could just be like... No, my mom and dad took my phone away. Sorry, I didn't get back to you. Dude, I remember. Yeah, I know what you're saying, though, because my folks once took away the keys to my Escalade when I was 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was furious. I was I was simply enraged. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, what the hell? Locked you in your room. And then the next stage, you say, was bar soap attacks. And then the next stage, Wapple, was they started taking away your Xbox. Yep. Well... PlayStation. What it's better. He's a, he's a PlayStation. <laughs> Whatever. Get out of here, Waffle. <laughs> no, he, he means it. He's... Did your parents ever threaten to take your guys' door off the hinges? No. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got that threat quite a bit. Well, when... I shared a room with my brother and cousin, so, you know, it'd be like all three of us would be in trouble for something. <laughs> you know, a- Ashley, yeah. the, the, last, the last half of my childhood, uh, I lived in the basement there was no door. When you walked into the basement, you were in my room. So there was no taking the doors off of anything. I that always was thought a, that was so cool, people it, living in the basement. It was wasn't like, cool. Oh, no, we, I, I grew up in a basement, Wapple. It's not It's not as cool as you think. I, I had you might share- be picturing a nice basement, though, <laughs> like a finished basement. Right. Where somebody no, might put a pool table or something. No, I'd like, I'm like going to pick up weed and stuff like that. It was always cool. Like The drug dealer just had like this huge room well, and sure, if sofas. It, if, it it was was all, if, it, if it was all him... Yeah. yeah. How do yep. I say that? Yep. If, the, yep. if the whole basement was his, yep. then that is cool. But when I was a kid, it was my bed and a, and a dresser was just kind of sitting there because there was no. <laughs> so I, I'd have high school beer parties and people would walk into the basement like ready for this. And, and they would like, why is there a bed over there? <laughs> <laughs> this <That's>, looks creepy. <laughs> that's where I sleep. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That changes things. You know what I mean? So we You be- have to get one of those changing things and put it up in front of well, the bed so they do see. I tried to make walls out of, yeah. you know, 25-cent bookcases and things like that. A privacy screen. It waffle, was pathetic. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah, if the whole basement belongs to you, hell yeah, then that's pretty cool. But not when your bed and your dresser are sitting by the couch and the television. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some other things people would get if they talk back or said a bad word. Hot sauce. Ooh, Ooh. how we. Uh, vinegar. That'd be pretty gross. Oh. I'll take soap over vinegar. Yeah, definitely. Not that I dislike vinegar, but I, I wouldn't want that to wa- washing out my mouth. Yeah, mm. a lot of people got the soap. Well, there was a, it was a real easy go-to and effective Move back in the day, you know, 
most of us at least had a, a couple bars of soap around the house. They should have made like a particular soap just for that purpose. Yeah, just, <laughs> mouth soap. Soap. just the mouthwash yeah. soap. <laughs> Boy, they would have made, as the young people say, they would have made bank. Yeah. Don't you think? Back punishment in soap? Thank 1975, you. if they would have come out with some kind of punishment soap, I think all of our folks would have fallen for it. Bought uh, cases of this stuff. Ah, uh, what the hell else is going yeah, on? Yeah, Irish Spring, it did. It smelled so delicious that you might swear just to get it. You know, yeah. <laughs> because they, you can best of both worlds. It's like Got a treat. It. I could say whatever I want around this effing place, and then I could eat some Irish Spring. I swear <laughs> to God, I used to stare at some of those bar soaps back in the day and just thought, you know, I don't know how bad. I, I wanted to take a big friggin' chomp out of it. <laughs> some intrusive thoughts. You're <laughs> almost taken over. Yeah. There's a guy in our listening audience that just went ahead and ate a bar of damn uh, Irish Spring. Just burping bubbles for days. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what yeah, else? And people are checking in about the belt, the hairbrush. Yeah, I got it all. All that. Yeah, there were there were whoopings. And I guess... Fly swatter? Ever get that one? No. no. Just no. the noise that made on your uh, bare butt. Yeah, it was a belt. Or just a an open hand slap uh, to the jaw. Um, yeah, I guess... My, our folks must have went that route as opposed to going with the soap. I guess I consider myself lucky. Sounds kind of miserable. I'd rather take a crack to the face than have the taste of discount soap in my mouth uh, for five, six days. <laughs> Mohawk mechanic Jesus brings up a good point. And now kids eat tie pot, Tide Pods for a challenge. <laughs> it used to be a punishment back then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, God. 12% of people had their mouths washed out with soap. You know, I've said it before uh, when we've had when we've had past conversations about being disciplined as children. Uh, my brother, he just did it all wrong. He could not contain his emotions. And he was so adverse to being told no. Um where he, you know, he, he dug his own grave in a lot of situations when we were kids. When he was told, you are not leaving the house until you clean your room, that would infuriate him to no end. And he would rather sit in his dirty room than just clean it up before he left because it was so offensive to him. Well, you telling me that I can't leave? That's how he reacted. Where I would say... Okay. And, you know, of course, it all depends on your parents and how they operate. My folks were pretty inattentive. So when I was told, clean your room, or a.k.a. the basement, uh, before you leave the house, what do you do? Kick dirty clothes under the bed. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I, I could get it done in, in under a minute. Everything mm -hmm. else in the closet. And make yep. it presentable. What's my mother going to do? Walk around my room? and No, she's not going to check for the legitimacy. Kick everything under the bed. Yeah, throw all your empty beer cans into the closet, whatever. And and that, that, then, then say, here you go. And they'd say, okay, you're free to go. You, know uh, what I'm, you, you see what I'm saying? I, I never understood my brother's approach. He, and so I'd be out with my buddies and my brother, stubborn as a sumbitch, would sit in his room for the entire day because he would not do what it was about. You can't tell me what to do. Some people just can't help but get in their own way. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah. That's how he was when we were little. At least. Well, he still doesn't like to be told what to do, ever, on any subject. Obviously, he reacts a little. He's 52 years old. But I, I just never, I, I would, and I would have conversations with him when we were, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade. I'd say, you're being a sucker. Just appease these dumb bastards so we can go do something. <laughs> That's how he operated, Cubby. Yeah, the only person I know that operated like that was going back to what we started talking about earlier was the buddy of mine with the super hot mom and the super hot sister. You couldn't tell him what to do. <laughs> he was very, uh, uh, he reacted very negatively to any authority figure. Oh, man. It, so he wanted to, he was, he was a, a very good athlete. Um, and he, like he used to race BMX bikes and stuff like that. And you couldn't catch him. He dominated. But he was one of the laziest kids I'd ever met. He definitely wouldn't listen to any authority, and he wanted to go into the military, and we thought, dude, you're never going to make it, or maybe that'll whip him <laughs> into shape. 
<laughs> but I mean, you you don't listen to anybody. So he ended up going into some other stuff. But I remember thinking, well, I don't think that's going to work out for you. You know, he wanted to be a fighter pilot. We all did after Top Gun came sure. out, right? Oh, yes. So he, but I thought, you know, maybe he will because he's a bright guy. You know, he's super athletic. He's motivated when he wants to be, which is barely ever. But yeah, that hot mom and hot sister thing. There's something about that. That's funny. He would get pretty angry pretty quick. We all wanted to be fighter pilots after Top Gun <laughs> oh, came heck out. Yeah, we did. That's hilarious. Obsessed. All right, there you go. What is it today? Wednesday. Uh, like I said, it's a big day uh, for uh, Timberwolves fans here in town, and that crowd's getting bigger by the second. We'll talk to Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver at seven thirty uh, about uh, tonight's big game one, and and plenty of other damn things. Stupid news and this and that. We'll be back in a few minutes on the Half Ass Morning Show. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future. And we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. What companies would you want to work for? Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the prestigious Just Capital 2024 seal. Bank of America is ranked number one in the banking industry and number one for their ongoing commitment to workers, offering best-in-class benefits, including a minimum wage of $25 an hour by 2025. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. I suppose uh, here before we... Go mental with the stupid news. I'm going to check the text messages real quick. That have been coming in the last few minutes. 651-989-9393. If you want to get a hold of us, we were talking about parental discipline options from back in the day. What our folks used to do to us to straighten us out. We talked about getting a spoon across the ass. Belts. Some of you had your mouth washed out with soap. Some of you had your mouth washed out with hot sauce. Here are some texts that have come in on uh, what uh, what the, these folks experienced growing up. Mexico City, Jesus, uh, didn't get soap in the yapper. That was too expensive for his family. He got habanero peppers. Oh, oh man. man. That's Ouch. hot. In the yap. Some other styles that folks experienced. Uh, they were forced to kneel on the metal floor grates. Oh, dude. As a punishment. As a punishment. That's getting creative there. Had to trim the weeds around the house with a tiny scissors. (laughs) (laughs) One of our listeners was beat with an oar. (laughs) That's impressive, actually. All right. Mm -hmm. I need you to stand six feet away from me. (laughs) (laughs) Wapa. Any second now, it's going to reach your bottom. And the kid's thinking... Damn, why did I have to grow up on a lake? <laughs> His folks would just tune him up with an oar. What if he didn't? That was just the beaten oar. They don't live anywhere near any body of water. Son, bring me the beaten oar. Oh, no, not the not the beating oar. Uh, and uh, finally, I mentioned that for me growing up, uh, half of my, my time spent living with my folks, my bedroom uh, was just... One part of an unfinished basement. There were no walls, just my bed sitting in the middle of a damp, unfinished basement. And a couple listeners texted in who had the same experience, and they got some good stories here. Uh, Nick and Josh, I was also, uh, I also had a supposed bedroom in an unfinished basement growing up. It was so great, they say. It was so great. (laughs) Especially when the hot water heater broke and flooded all of my belongings. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, how come Donnie didn't make it to school today? His friggin' bedroom was underwater. His clothes are soaked. Uh, his bed has floated to the ceiling. We had that one happen once. That is no fun. No fun whatsoever. Dude, you know what happened once in our friggin' basement? The dog 
Megan Marie, don't get me wrong, best girl in the whole world. Yes, you are, I used to say. <laughs> yes, you are. Are you my girl? She wants, boy, she'd love to chase a tennis ball, Cubby. Oh, yeah, they do- the dogs do, you know. Dogs yeah. will do that. Yeah. And she, she pushed her tennis ball to where it perfectly clogged the floor drain underneath the uh, washing machine. Are you following how this might work? Yeah. Yep. And so we turned on the washing machine and left for a while. And when it drained, it wasn't able to go into the... Because the tennis ball was clogged. We came home to two inches of water in our basement slash my bedroom. One more text message. Our washer used to flood sometimes, too, or overflow. It was the easiest thing for it to do. Garbage. Yeah. Suck. We, we grew up with garbage. Uh, one more listener says, I lived in my parents' unfinished basement. And we also burned wood for heat. So there was a giant wood pile next to my bed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just you and a wood tick family would cuddle up together at bedtime. We had a boiler, and that thing could get pretty noisy. Oh. And then the washer and dryer were right next to uh, our room in the basement there. and Those would be pretty noisy, too. Yes, the, uh, the uh, what the hell was it? The fuel oil. Fuel oil? Is that what heated your home? I don't know what they used. We had, the, sure. we had that massive fuel oil tank, and it reeked when they'd refill it. It was nothing but laughs. Nothing but laughs. I haven't had time to pre-read this uh, text message, but uh, people talking about punishments they had as a kid. Uh, as a punishment, I was forced to listen. I was forced to listen to "Radar Love" by White Line. <laughs> <laughs> that guy hates that cover. It oh is a great God. cover. He can't let it go no. for one day. It's almost every day he rips on that song. Unfairly, I might add. Forced to listen to Radar Love. That's not a punishment. By White Lion from their 1989 record, Don't Tell Me, Big Game. Big Game is correct. Mm. No more speed, I'm almost there. Gotta I didn't know it was a cover when I first heard it. Gotta take care. You did not know. I never heard the golden earring version. You did not know of the golden earring. I did not. Hell of a deal. All right. To start off today's stupid news report, you want to talk about commitment to a bit. Our leadoff hitter in today's stupid news report certainly has to be given credit for that. A Chinese man wanted for murder pretended to be deaf and mute for 20 years. Wow. (laughs) This commitment right there. In order to avoid prison. For over 20 years, actually, he pretended to be a deaf and mute wanderer who lived in the mountains. Seems like there'd be different ways you could do that to be far less taxing, but 20 years to go (laughs) along with that. Here's the backstory on this lunatic bastard. He goes by the name of Zhao. Way the F back. In May of 2000, ad four, Zhao got into it with a neighbor in his hometown. At one point, Zhao allegedly picked up a shovel and cracked his neighbor over the skull with it. And that killed the poor guy dead on the spot. So that night, knowing that He likely is going to spend the rest of his life behind bars, or worse, maybe get the death penalty. Zhao decided to abandon his wife, easy decision, and his 11-year-old child, difficult decision. He decided it's best to go on the run ski. He ran into the mountains, where it says here he became a scavenger, and he would sell scraps of this and that to survive. To make sure he never gave anything away, about his past life, Zhao pretended to be deaf and mute for the next 20 years. He would only smile at people and communicate through hand gestures. I was looking up um, like if deaf people or mute people could make any noises whatsoever. Like, could they laugh? Because when like the kids were young, our current son, our youngest son, when he would, um, like if he's pretending to sleep, right? Because he doesn't want to get up or whatever it is. If you crack a joke or something, they start laughing, you know, ha-ha, you're faking it. I was wondering if you could do the same thing with a mute person, and I guess they can laugh. So you got to throw that one out the window. I'll be damned. Trying to see if they can make a noise. Mm. They said depending on how you become mute, they can make noises. Very interesting. They could laugh, they can cry, things, things like that. Time. Time, Cubby. It passed. The years went 
on and on and on. It does go by fast after a while, doesn't it? Right. But police never gave up on finding Zhao. Murdering ass that he is. Zhao never once contacted his family. Wow. Over the, that's not that big of a deal in my opinion. But anyway, uh, he never once contacted his family during the two decades he was living in the woods, eating his own feces and, and such. But he effed it all up. He did, because the guy's just a natural-born prick. Last month, police took Zhao in, in, in custody, into custody. How does a grown person into say custody, that? Yeah. They took Zhao into custody because he got in a fight with some locals, okay? And they thought, oh, it's the deaf-mute guy who lives in the woods, right? He got into a fight with some locals. If he would have behaved himself, maybe he'd still... When the cops ran Zhao's old photos through what they call here a database, they realized they had the some bitch. After 20-some years, they found the prick that killed his neighbor with a shovel. And they straight up asked him, are you Zhao, the guy who killed his neighbor with a damn shovel? And he said, word. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. <laughs> the jig is up. Tired of the ruse, I suppose. Nutty old Zhao told the police, I've been holding back my words for 20 years. I felt that I was going crazy. When I left, my son was 11, and now 20 years have passed. I wonder how my family's doing. <laughs> I wonder how much access he had to social media, and if so, how, uh, how vocal he was there, you know, sharing his opinion and stuff. So he could get it out one way or, or oh, another. You think maybe in the woods he had a computer? And Possibly, was... yeah. I don't know. He'll now have to serve the prison time that he had been running from for so long. The people who knew him as the deaf and mute mountain man told police they had never suspected him of being a criminal on the run. He kept to himself. He never talked to anyone, so no one really knew anything about him. Because I, I saw the area where he was living. It didn't look as remote as they describe it in the story. It looked pretty... I mean, there's a lot more going on. Oh, yeah? Just, yeah. Nothing but trees it and wasn't uh, like the chipmunks dude. or whatever's no. going on. Uh, well, that's, a, that's one hell of a story. Um, I don't know if you recall this one. At the close here of the story of Zhao, the murdering bastard who went on the run for 20 years, um, another runaway criminal. Uh, this sounds familiar. I'm not sure what the hell was wrong with this effing guy, uh, but he spent 14 years of his life hiding in a mountain cave after stealing $23 from a gas station. <laughs> so apparently he hmm. thought, I don't know what he was thinking. Why would he? Yeah, I don't think he needed to go to those extremes, yeah. but no, whatever. I remember us talking about that and at the time wondering the same thing. Like, I mean, maybe they're a lot more strict, but I can't be that strict. Where he, the alternative is... Worse than living in the cave for yeah. that. that is, I'm, I'm going to need a bigger haul if I'm going to go have to live in a cave for 14 years. That's an extreme overreaction in my book. Like the old joke about the plane crash, Josh. There's a plane crash, and uh, uh, the plane crashes up in the mountains. And a half hour after the plane crashed, cops and paramedics show up to the scene, and one of the folks involved in the plane crashes is eating the severed limb of one of the other folks on the and the cops say what are you doing and the guy says i had to survive <laughs> of course if you're going to be a trash bag criminal you got to know a good place to hide out you got to have a good place to hide out and this guy nailed it a dude wanted by police for shooting at folks uh, was found in a dryer. <laughs> Anybody here ever get stuffed in a dryer by a sibling? No. I used to do it myself during hide and seek. Crawl in there? Would you yeah. really? Yeah, that was a good spot. I don't know if I ever went up into the dryer. Uh, the cops said this uh, individual was, quote, folded but not so neatly inside <laughs> a dryer. The cops were looking for this effing loser, a 31-year-old by the name of David Jackson. They got a tip. He was hanging out in somebody's house. When police searched the house, they found dumbass inside a clothes dryer, like most of us have, at the house. 
it, it did look even smaller than your normal clothes dryer, but maybe that was my perception was off. Josh, you saw the, the pictures. It looked like kind of a smaller version of what I might have in the house. Well, see, I couldn't tell if it was that or he was just a little bit larger. Is he a but, tall guy? But I think, you know, like you, you're right, though. There's cops next to it. That made it look like it was pretty small. Yeah, the cops might be big guys. I don't, I don't know. know how this guy fit in there. He must be some sort of contortionist. The pictures of this jag off before, during, and after the cops pulled him out of the dryer are pretty damned amusing. <laughs> the look on his face, a combination of guilt and embarrassment. Yeah, he kind of has a, yeah, you got me, yeah. that type of look. Yeah, I was in the dryer. This is on 93x.com, correct? Yep. Cops pulled him uh, smooth out of the dryer. Uh, they say one limit at a time. And then they uh, put the cuffs on him. One of the cops on the scene, uh, he said this. Once they got the dude out the dryer, uh, the cop said, we, mer- we removed three dryer sheets, two mismatched socks, and a crumpled up tissue from his surprisingly wrinkled Star Wars T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he had some of the, you know, some uh, socks and dryer sheets stuck to his Star Wars T-shirt. He's going bye-bye for... Quite a while, this guy. Quite a while. All right, if you followed yesterday's program, you know that dudes named Kyle failed terribly in their attempt to set a new record for the largest gathering of people with the same name. They did. The Kyles got together. They wanted to break the all-time record. They didn't even come close. Here's a group of folks who did set the record that they were aiming for. And it's even dumber than the Kyles. A museum in Missouri set the new record uh, for the largest gathering of people with underwears on their heads. (laughs) Just like Gary Wallace and Wyatt Tents Abdonnelly in the 1985 documentary Weird Science when they created a woman with Wyatt's computer. They all had underwears of some sort on their head. Josh, in your dream, did I wake up in the middle of the night and puke in your sink? You did. You yacked right in it. Are you supposed to say no? No. No? No. Maybe it was a dream. You know, a very weird, bizarre, vivid erotic, wet, detailed dream. Maybe we have malaria. Direct quotes from Weird Science, 1985. Back to this museum. Apparently, the museum is known for being quirky. Oh, Dana, you got to go there. (laughs) They're known for being... Back on March 14th, they set out to bring 314 people. You get it? 314? Back on March 14th, they set out to bring 314 people into the joint and put underwears on their heads for one minute. And they got it done. Before this attempt, I guess the museum already holds four other Guinness World Records. This is their thing. Uh, They hold the record for the world's largest pencil Mm. is, is located at the museum. It's 76 feet long. Uh, They have the world's largest seesaw uh, at this joint. That's 82 feet long. The world's largest tennis racket. I don't know the size of the tennis. And then I don't know where they're going with this. The world's tallest man? What do you mean? He works (laughs) there? He strolled through? (laughs) (laughs) What do they they mean, the world's tallest man? He he hangs out there? Or you have a picture of the world's tall? What, What are you talking about? And the museum also says that it owns... The world's largest pair. The world's largest pair of underwears. Hey, Josh, they found your ex-girlfriend's underwear. (laughs) (laughs) The world's largest underwear says here has a 16-foot waistband. Whoa. So in the end, 355 people showed up, put drawers on their heads, and they set the record. (laughs) Hmm. There, There were a couple looks in the crowd like... 
I don't know what, what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I knew it was silly, but we all look ridiculous. I, I like wanted f- I want to do something nice for the community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's my cousin's friend who set it up. I want to help, but now <laughs> I feel like a massive jag off. I work at the museum, and now I have to do this. I'm the PR person. Oh, great. They're taking a picture. I'm taking my underwear off my head. I bet the PR person was pretty stoked. But there were some regretful looks on huh, Josh. I thought so. Okay. Yeah. Well, there are some people going, you know, I, this wasn't my idea. I was just trying to step out of my comfort zone a little bit, and this is why I don't do anything. <laughs> but That's... then, on the other hand, there are some people that are like, oh, boy, this is the greatest day ever. Yeah, I've been waiting it. for this. Those are the my ones time. who work there, Wobble. Oh, those are the ones you got to watch out They for. work at the museum. They have to make it seem like everything that happens there is the most fun uh, possible option in life. Uh, the little kids look like they were having fun. But that's about it. You, yep. You'll get a kick out of this, I, at least I hope, um, in closing. You, you know how more and more we're surrounded by bitches who just can't <laughs> help but be angry for no reason. You're well aware of that, right? Of course. Right. Listen to this. This comment. This comment was sent into the website that posted this here story about the undies record, okay? Okay. This is a real person, uh, apparently a real person who had to comment on this harmless, silly, stupid Guinness record where people have underwears on their heads. Pretty sad. Not what I'd call an accomplishment, SMH. (laughs) Shut up. Glad they ended with the SMH. (laughs) Really drive the point home. Do something worthwhile instead of this foolishness, which only proves to the rest of the world that Americans are low class. It's bad for our reputation. Uh, this person is miserable. Yep. Miserable with their life. That's true. It's okay to do harmless and silly things. Jealous, they didn't think of it. Upset, they didn't know what was going on. <sighs> now, here's another damn gathering. Jeez, everyone's getting together. This is overwhelming to you uh, somehow? <laughs> kind of. These get-togethers? Yeah. Well, this is more of a contest, Wapple. Do you like contests? Sure, you yeah. You pick a side. Well, as you long as you for... don't have to go anywhere. Well, you might you don't have, have to, go, to go anywhere? Yeah. You like going places. Missouri? I think I'm out. What, what, who's talking about Missouri? He didn't even say anything but, yet. That's the, that where was the, the museum last, was. We've moved on to a new story now. Yeah, but now there's another gathering. It's a contest, I said. <laughs> <laughs> you can What's, win a prize. <laughs> what is the dude's problem over there, Josh? I don't know. He, it, I know what it is. He went out of town over the weekend, and I bet his girlfriend wants to go out of tan, town again. That's got to be something. No, there's I, something there. What's no. wrong with your friend, Josh? I don't know what's happening what's over your there. Friend? Are you okay? Maybe. This is a contest. Bark twice if you're in Milwaukee. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and you know, Captain America there from the last story, uh, he won't have to lose his heart on over this one. Uh, He likely won't care about this one uh, because this went down in, how do you call it, South Korea. So Captain America there is not going to have to, you know, comment on this story about how you're wasting your time. Americans should be. He's going to be okay with this one. Hundreds of folks got together for what they call here a power nap contest. Oh. Power naps suck. Okay, hang on. They're not long enough. Wapple, you're off the hook. Okay. What's wrong with a... Well, first off, how do you define a power nap? Isn't it like 20 minutes or less? Oh, okay. Yeah, power naps are shorter. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are Short and quick. Just kind of rest in your eyes. Okay. Uh, When you... I'm sorry I blew up, Ashley, because it sounded like you were knocking naps in general. Never. And, and I was going to be shocked, and I was likely going to have to have a sit-down with you after the program uh, because, <laughs> well, I'll just tell you the story. A power nap contest. This event was raised to, uh, how do you call it? It was held to raise awareness about the importance and significance of taking timely breaks and rests. That sounds awful nice. I'm the kind of guy who likes a break and loves to rest. So hundreds of South Koreans showed up for this. It was last Saturday. They showed up in their PJs. And I think this is how it it played itself out. They attempted to nap for 90 minutes. Now, that's, that's not enough for me, just for the record. But anyway, this was a competition. 
And this is the part that I find really interesting. There were other folks at the event that were there to try and keep competitors from falling asleep. It says here they would try and distract the sleepers with feather tickling, whispering, and mosquito noises. Oh, the mosquito noises. That sounds like a good way to get punched in the mouth, um, you know, in a real scenario. Someone bothering you when you're trying to take a nap, whatever method they use. Oh, yeah. I know a couple of people where if you wake them up, it's borderline violence. Yeah. Just the rage. So that was the gimmick. You, you show up wearing your uh, PJs. You, you sprawl out on the floor. You try to get a nap, and folks try to keep you from achieving your nap. But yeah, you got to get some damn sleep. I worry about Josh because the some bitch never gets any damn sleep. I don't know how you haven't gone nuts yet. Well, I, f- I probably have in little ways, but I I get a little bit of a nap. But I can really sleep through anything, so I might do okay in this. I never a, hour and a half. I don't remember the last time I've ever napped that long, but I could uh, easily sleep through all of that. Oh, I don't. You're saying you're. I mean, if I'm sound asleep. Whispering and mosquitoes aren't going to wake me up, but I don't think I could get to sleep while folks are doing that to I me. Could, I could. You easily. could get yeah, to could. sleep as they're... Yeah. I'm going to test that. I'm going to come over tonight, Josh, and tickle you with a feather as you try to fall asleep. Okay, but just my genitals. Okay. Everything cool. else is off limits. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I could certainly sleep through it, but I don't think I could get to sleep. I'm surprised because we both grew up on busy roads. And I, you know, I, it was very loud where I grew up, and it was like all, all the time, day and night. Well, I, so I'm I just, can, I could fall asleep through really any. You could put me on the side of thirty-five W, and I could fall asleep. Well, yeah, I could too, but I think there's a big difference. Well, I thought you between, just said you couldn't fall asleep if there's noise and stuff. Well, but I think there's a difference between the hum of traffic and someone speaking into your ear or tickling you with a feather. Oh I, yeah, I would end up choking them to death, and then I would fall. Anyway. <laughs> Lack of sleep is a major problem, they say, in South Korea. And this is very concerning. Oh, God. Citizens in South Korea, all they get is seven hours and 41 minutes of sleep per night. How oh, do they no. do it? Oh, that's oh, it. No. That awful. You're embarrassing your country. So you don't have you, you couldn't fall asleep through your dogs kicking your ass and all that kind of stuff? I mean, that's... I could I could fall asleep through... Many, 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 many things. But we're talking about someone in your ear going, whatever, you know, and tickling you with a feather? No. The tickling would not do good with me. Yeah, yeah. That's what would get me. No, that that, that would keep me awake. I would need that to stop before I I'll represent the show. I'll go out there and I'll represent the team. (laughs) Yeah. Bring home the title for us. Thanks for traveling for me. (laughs) Once I... Yeah, yeah, apparently all of a sudden you don't like to travel. (laughs) Could you fall asleep with flies landing on your face, single father, Jesus said. Well, that's not part of it. It's just the noise. I don't like bugs. But, I, you know, I grew up in a basement with nothing but bugs. I Once I am asleep, there is nothing, almost nothing, that could wake me. But yep. I'm talking about the process of falling asleep. Very different. Very different for me. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a deck here. Josh, tell folks that I don't ever really try to be a deck. You don't try and be a deck. I just can't give much more time to these grown folks who go ahead and marry a doll. I mean, knock yourself out. No one's trying to stop you from marrying a doll. The bit has just worn itself out. But I'll give you the gist anyway in case you're wildly entertained by this stuff. A 40-year-old woman claims she married a ghost. And then she divorced him when she thought he was cheating on her. And then her ghost ex started stalking her. And now she has adopted a possessed clown doll. Oh, uh, heck no. This the, is why I wouldn't. There's always drama. Have you noticed that? There's never, they never say, oh, I married a doll. It's been great. I've no. had a wonderful life. There's always cheating, always controversy, all kinds of stuff. You're absolutely right. That. This lady uh, goes by the name of Bro Carde. Uh, oh, she says that she dis- she divorced the ghost after he got too drunk. On their honeymoon. Uh, so, <laughs> Ghosts are such lushes. There you go. And then he snuck away. Bastard. <laughs> there you go. 
And to me, I don't keep up on this stuff, uh, maybe as much of the, as the rest of you do. But, Josh, uh, isn't it like the same two or three people always on the Internet giving us an update on what doll they've married? Yeah, it's it, one in particular. She's married a couple. Didn't they have, like, kids or something? They have they plenty did. of yeah. kids. Did you see the, the kid looked exactly like the dad? It so did. I'm not going to mm-hmm. doubt the paternity there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hair, eyes, everything. That was definitely that doll's son. I mean, okay, we get it. We get it. This is what you're into. We understand. You don't need to update the local news every six months as to what's... Uh, And we can close out with this one for you dairy farmers out there in our listing audience. 306 head of damn cattle were stolen over a 12-day period in Australia. Where's the beef? That's a lot of cattle. Police have charged three men in connection with the alleged theft. $165,000 worth of cattle. Snatched. It's like Yellowstone. You could get taken to the train station for something like that, right, Wapple? Oh, boy, Uh-oh. howdy, you would. The operation... <laughs> what What did he just say? I said, boy, howdy, you would. The operation allegedly involved helicopters. Helicopters? Oh, yeah. What, you're, you're tuned in to this process? Yeah, Yellowstone. They have helicopters. I thought they're that, flying I, around everywhere. And, and, oh. they're, and they're flying around stealing cattle? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, people stole cattle, and then they'd break fences and uh, get the cattle into their uh, properties. Okay, I thought Yellowstone was from the 1800s. There was prequels yeah. to that. Oh, okay. That's yeah, they're, they're all over the place. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a few of them. All right. Helicopters. And you pick up a cow and you fly away with it. Is that what I'm to understand here? No, the, no. the cows are flying the helicopter. It, this yeah. isn't really that tough to understand. The cows, they put on like an aviation helmet, mm-hmm. and they get behind the yoke. And that's how they get out of there? And they, Yeah, they take off. <laughs> Cute. What a life. Like you were saying earlier, what were you saying about, uh, what, what story were you uh, saying something similar, Josh? Uh, there, to me, there's a much easier way to be a scumbag thief <laughs> Yeah, yeah. than a cow thief. That's, but I guess you go with what you know. The thieves likely know the uh, the bovine uh, lifestyle. I'm actually surprised it wasn't worth more money than that. It just seems like they're worth so much, you know. Mm-hmm. Tell me really what they do with the helicopters. I didn't make it that far. I know there was cattle thieves, certainly. I have never saw the helicopter. Wapple watches a lot of this television show over there, so go yeah, ahead. What do they I, I do with the... I, I watched the first... Four seasons, maybe? I forget. I'm picturing they bring in a helicopter, they lower it down, they wrap something or another around a cow or two, and then they fly away with the cow hanging from the helicopter. <laughs> no, Swing you kind of use it for surveillance and stuff. Look uh, where you can, where the next field's coming, watch the river, stuff like that. And watch also, the river. Also, when they do runs, so you have... Keep an cow- eye on that river, boys. Yeah, you have, <laughs> cow- you have cowboys on the one side, and you're trying to mush them into an area, so they use the helicopter, fly close to them, get them to go the other way. Please stop talking. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, I lost my cool. I did. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't hear another word. I, I just, I don't know why, but I couldn't. You did ask him, though. I, I did. To the I did. I started the problem, and then I didn't have the nuts to finish it. Um, <laughs> well, now I, you know that they're not just picking up cows and dropping them places. I took it too literally. <laughs> I was picturing, well, can't you see a helicopter wrapping something around a cow, and the cow's just going to go, okay, I'm going this way now. Yeah. Right? That would take forever with all the cows they see. That's yeah. a lot of cow, unless yeah. you could do five, six at a time. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Hi, Julia. I'm uh, Jake wants to ask you to prom, so I thought I'd help him out. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to prom with him? Yes! Awesome. There you go. You got it. Well, that was just the cutest damn thing, wasn't it, John? I thought it was pretty adorable. I love that. Very, very cool. Very cool of him to do that. So uh, what you heard right there is some uh, teenage kid. He wants to ask a girl to prom. He's a high school kid. He uh, somehow makes his way into Bryce Harper's neighborhood, the star baseball player for the Philadelphia Phillies. He somehow makes his way to Bryce Harper's front door, knocks on the door. Bryce Harper answers the door, and he says, uh, will you ask a girl to prom for me? And Bryce Harper uh, must have really lost his touch with the ladies. I don't know. He's got nothing going on. He says, yeah, sure, let's go. (laughs) I would have loved if she answered the door and and said, like, who is this? 
<laughs> oh, like she didn't know who Bryce Harper was? <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. That would have been great if she would have been upset about it, uh, had no idea who Bryce Harper was, and told the kid to get off her proper. Yeah, but, but you bring your older brother with you and ask me to prom? What's going on here? Although, Ashley, can you imagine being a senior in high school? Bryce Harper shows up at your door, obviously quite gorgeous and a talented baseball player, and then you find out, oh, yeah, I guess I'll go with Jake. Yeah, that would be heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, he's, he's into me. Oh. Harper must not lead the rock star lifestyle because he had a, a spare hour or two to help this kid out. I would think he'd just be buried in college girls uh, all day long. So he goes to the girls. How They knock on her. She says yes. I would never, ever in a million years think that, uh, you know, if I was going to knock on a celebrity's door, first and foremost, that they wouldn't just shoot me on sight. And then secondly, I don't think I'd have the balls to ask him to do something like that. Cool on his part just to say, let's go. I got nothing going on right this second. I like the way the kid said it. This is how the kid said exactly what Josh just did. Uh, It's very high school. I knocked on his door. He seemed cool with it at first, and then he was like, can I get your email so we can plan this out? And as I was leaving, he was like, why don't we just do this right now? (laughs) So they did. I just remembered something. You want to talk about knocking on somebody's door and it's you know the the idea of knocking on a wildly famous person's door and they answer uh you know whose door i once knocked on uh the ex-wife uh one of muhammad ali's ex-wives oh wow why if i remember correctly it was a radio bit I don't remember all the details, but this was back when I was doing the really obnoxious, awful, terrible, on-the-street guy character. And she lived here, obviously? Yeah. Was she a Minnesota woman? Don't know. Don't know. Don't remember. But I don't remember why I was there, but it was... uh, Anyway, the latest biggest game in Timberwolves history begins tonight at 730. We'll talk about that with Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder. Uh, We'll talk about the other NBA game from last night. The Twins should have more uh, players-only meetings. It turned out well for them. (laughs) Stanley Cup, uh, game one of the Eastern Conference Finals tonight. Uh, And one of my all-time favorite athletes has retired. We'll talk about that in about a half hour. Josh's News is coming up next. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future. And we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. Welcome to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Guest star Sarah Carter as Alicia Baker. Although I didn't really work with her a lot. But Tom did, and they had some real big smoochy scenes. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Could there be any more sex? What was a three-page makeout scene that just kept going? Good Lord. We get it. They have chemistry. Jump in now or catch up on any of the past seasons of Talkville on YouTube or wherever you listen. Half-assed morning show. 93X. I still am in disbelief. The whole thing it just blows my mind. I would have never, ever heard him in a million years. He was my best friend. A 44-year-old mother in Michigan was arrested earlier this month for her role in the death of her husband, who died outside of a Wendy's following a fight over Nintendo. Oh. The tragic incident occurred March 25th, about 12.35 p.m. at a Wendy's located in Holland, Michigan. The couple were in the restaurant parking lot with their daughter in the car when they got into a heated argument. Robert Leon allegedly got out of the vehicle, but when his wife, Venice tried to pull out of a parking spot, he jumped on the hood of the moving car. Robert fell to the ground and struck his head, causing his death. Venice emphasized she had no intention of hurting her husband, 
She explained the argument stemmed from having recently ordered a Nintendo Switch gaming console when her husband wanted a PS5. He got really upset. Like, I've never seen him like that. I don't know why he got so angry. He slapped me and then he punched my arm. I was trying to keep my cool. And I told him, you know, I can cancel the order. I can order the PS5. She claimed she was only trying to drive to an adjacent parking lot to give her husband a chance to cool down when he suddenly leapt onto the car. So far, she's only being charged with a moving violation, a misdemeanor. Apparently, um, this guy really takes his video game seriously. Were, were these people not okay? <laughs> uh, they didn't seem to be. Yeah. No. Yeah. Although I do see her side of things wanting a Nintendo Switch over a PS5. Nah, I don't get that. <laughs> really don't get that. Uh-oh, the two of you are. <laughs> Wobble, you want to go outside? Yeah, maybe we do. I've got she, a car. <laughs> she ordered the wrong one, and uh, he didn't take that very well. They don't sound okay. No. No. On this day, 44 years ago in 1980, the original Pac-Man arcade video game was released in Japan. It hit oh. the U.S. five months later. I'm sorry. I thought it, I thought it was going to have something to do with the movie Xanadu. No, no. no. <laughs> Actually, nothing to do with that that I'm aware of. Pac-Man, huh? Pac-Man. Great game. Police in Nebraska arrested a Lincoln man after he allegedly threw fish and carrots inside a brand new DMV office. Looks like something fishy is going on, 34-year-old Joseph Schrader said before flinging the fish and catapulting carrots over the wall, <laughs> ceiling, and carpet, causing about $9,000 in damages to the new DMV location. He's got a problem uh, with the folks at the DMV? I guess. They think he had some uh, mental issues going on, but he did say looks like something fishy is going on. Yeah. He, oh, oh, he that really said that out loud. Yeah, that's what that's he said. Good. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got these fish and carrots everywhere. But uh, the guy did have a good line. $9,000 for fish and carrots, though. Uh, wow. They had to clean that out. I guess it was pretty nasty. A Michigan firefighter had to be taken into police custody over the weekend simply for fighting a firefighter. When on the scene of a raging inferno, firefighters were supposed to be fighting fires, not each other. But that's what happened in Detroit over the weekend. A call came in about a burning home about 2 a.m. Saturday. Fires in Schoolcraft. Fire in Schoolcraft. Engine 30 is on the scene, stretching on a dwelling. For an unknown reason, one of the crew got pissed and assaulted a fellow firefighter in the middle of dousing flames. That's hilarious. The fight got so bad, the chief requested police assistance. <laughs> a firefighter has been assaulted. A spokesperson for the department didn't have too much to say yet. It was a very busy weekend. I'll have something to say on that once I review all of the evidence with that. We'll tell you uh, he's been released. Local media said the aggressor was still in his fire gear when taken away by officers. Dude, that's good. <laughs> Uh, this reporter said fire a lot in this 33-second report. Detroit firefighters known as some of the best in the business at fighting fires, not fighting each other while also fighting fires. Detroit fire crews arrived quickly to a significant fire inside this home, and the firefighters got right to work. Something went wrong with a firefighter who comes from a Detroit firefighter family, where he allegedly assaulted a fellow firefighter as they're fighting the fire, to the point where the chief on the fire scene had to call Detroit police for help. We are told in his fire gear and all, officers arrested that firefighter and took him to the Detroit Detention Center. I think we were at about, what, 13? Holy cow. I lost track of 114. Fire, I'm going to have, uh, fire, I'm gonna have fire, flashbacks fire. after that. <laughs> he had to have, like, that had to have been like a case of beer bet with a buddy to see how many times he could work that word in there. Oh, yeah, they wrote that out. They uh -huh. knew exactly what they were doing. A fire department in New Jersey is reminding residents about the dangers of using gasoline to start indoor fires after crews responded to an incident on Friday. Gasoline to start an indoor fire. Yeah, you don't want to do that in the fireplace. Okie dokie. <laughs> All of a sudden, we can't do that. <laughs> Who knew? Responding to a report of heavy smoke coming from a chimney, they discovered a fire in the fireplace with a large amount of smoke in and around the residence. Officials found the homeowner had made a dangerous and dumb decision. Fire officials discovered that the homeowner tried to light a fire in the fireplace using gasoline and papers. Residents are urged to never use a highly flammable fuel such as gasoline to light indoor fireplaces. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> Took over an hour Man. for the flames to be extinguished. Lucky somebody didn't get killed dead in that one. Yeah. A fender bender on a Miami highway took a dark turn this week when a screwdriver-wielding woman charged at a driver who rear-ended her. Now, uh, she was in the middle of the, the freeway, stopped when she got rear-ended. 
Video of the bewildering attack was captured by a news helicopter as it soared over the crash, which occurred about 6 a.m. Monday. The scantily clad woman was seen walking down the highway with the tool pointed at two men who (laughs) scurried to get away from her. She's got a screwdriver. This case was on the news. The video is pretty wild if your owner wants to see it. Yeah. Your honor does want to see it, <laughs> and he wants to see it bad. What the hell was going on with the scandally clad part of things, uh, Cubby? What, what was going on? Sorry, I got lost in the moment there yeah? for a second with that clip. Understandable. Yeah, I don't know. She was just kind of dressed to, for success or whatever Whatever she had going on. She had something going on that morning. Or maybe she's coming home from something. I'm not sure. Well, what was she wearing? She had like a, uh, a top that really showed things off. Oh. Um, mm. Mm-hmm. If you know what I'm saying. I think I get your drift. This is a conversation about boobs. (laughs) Boobs. She slowly raised the makeshift weapon over her head before running toward the pair, seemingly going after the older gentleman before turning her attention to the younger man who pushed her away from his buddy. The woman grabbed the younger man by the throat and made stabbing-like gestures in a scuffle which lasted several seconds before a third man pulled her away. The judge had some advice for the hot-tempered 26-year-old. In the future, if you're driving, if you're ever involved in a car accident, it's probably best to just call the police and remain in your vehicle so you avoid having to come to criminal court. The 26-year-old has been cited three times in the past for traffic infractions. (laughs) (laughs) Not the world's best driver. No. No. I I just found this story. She's not wearing anything. Yeah, not too much. It's it's scantily clad. Oh, her mugshot makes it look like she's naked. Well, she wasn't naked. No, she wasn't yeah, naked. She was not naked. It just showed a lot. There was a lot up It top. does show a lot. You're yeah. right. The Florida Highway Patrol just released dash cam video of a police chase involving high speeds, dramatic crashes, an unusual escape attempt, and nipples. The 19-minute long video shows Melina Logan's reckless maneuvers in Miami-Dade while trying to get away from police in a car she had just stole. The 27-year-old North Carolina woman was in a 2024 Honda Civic that a dealership allowed her to test drive, which turned out to be a bad idea because she took it. <laughs> Police say she took off at high speed and during the chase was involved in several hit-and-run crashes. When standstill traffic brought the high-speed chase to a halt, she jumped out of the damaged Civic, ran, and took a dive off a ramp into the water below. This is crazy. <laughs> she was topless when police officers rescued her. Another driver had to be hospitalized after they were hit by Logan at the end of that chase. That ain't right. Nope, didn't get away. She also tried to drown one of the officers, so she could be in some trouble for that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wild video footage captured the moment a driver rammed his bright green Lamborghini into an armed robber who had just stole his Rolex. Ooh, that was an expensive heist. A lot of money in that first sentence there. You can see this video on 93x.com as well. The footage from Brazil shows the crook riding his motorcycle up to the expensive sports car as it was stopped at a red light Saturday. Then he held up the driver for his designer timepiece before riding away. That didn't sit well with the 64-year-old Lamborghini driver who took off after the fleeing robber, rammed into the bike, and also crashed into a pole. The suspect quickly got on his feet and runs away, leaving his motorcycle at the scene as onlookers helped the crash Lambo driver. As well as his bike, the suspect left a mobile phone and a handgun, according to police, who used those items to identify their suspect. This guy tried to outrun a Lamborghini on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it didn't nice look tries. like the world's fastest bike. For a wristwatch. An expensive one, but yes. Yes, that's true. A 13-year-old pointed a flare gun with a mounted green laser at a Florida sheriff's office helicopter. Oh. And the reason is dumber than many other similar stories that we've told in the past. The teen's reason for nearly blinding the pilot, he was bored People think it's a joke. We've made multiple arrests on this very thing in the last couple of years because people think it's funny. A police chopper was over the Largo area about 12.30 a.m. Thursday, April 18th, when the pilot noticed a green laser. Deputies on the ground found the 13-year-old who said he pointed the laser at the helicopter because he was bored. Ah, freaking teenagers. Do you think that uh, juvenile hall um, will keep him entertained? Maybe they've got some arts and crafts for him. (laughs) When officers <laughs> caught up to him, the teen said he didn't know it was a police helicopter, or otherwise he never would have done it. You know why you're in the back of a car in handcuffs? Because I'll put a flashlight on the helicopter. Okay. I know the police helicopter. It is. It was.
Then exactly a week <laughs> later, about 23 miles northeast, a man was arrested after pointing a laser at a jet blue plane trying to land in Tampa International. It will literally light up the entire cockpit with this green light, and for maybe a matter of seconds, they could lose their eyesight, and that is obviously incredibly dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. 59-year-old Boston man has been arrested and federally indicted for allegedly aiming a laser pointer at a Coast Guard helicopter oh trying God. to land at a hospital. He could face five years in prison. The Federal Aviation Administration reported a significant increase in laser strikes on aircraft. Pilots reporting 13,304 incidents last year, which is a 41% spike from 2022. And here I am, Covey, at the house just using it on the cat. Yeah, you're, you're really missing out. Yeah, yeah I yeah. was going to get say, outside. get these guys a cat. <laughs> the FAA emphasized the serious threat laser strikes pose to aviation safety as high-powered lasers can incapacitate pilots and endanger hundreds of lives. Robert Downey Jr. was spotted at the downtown Minneapolis Target along Nicollet Mall yesterday uh, promoting a coffee brand he calls Happy Coffee. The Iron Man actor spent some time giving autographs and taking photos with shoppers before leaving. Someone even gave him an Iron Man mask to sign. <laughs> That's cool. Downey won his first Oscar this year, picking up Best Supporting Actor for his performance in Oppenheimer. Tonight, the third season premiere of Rich and Shameless on TNT. The show takes on stories of fame, fortune, and the problems that follow with tonight's episode featuring former Viking Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre. More season finales dominate the networks this evening on NBC. The final episodes of the seasons for Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD. I know that's a big night for you, Ashley, right? Heck yeah, I'm excited. Survivor Season 46 comes to a close on CBS. Then on ABC, the season finales of Abbott Elementary and the Connors. Shout out to Metal Grinding Assembly Jesus, and that's 93X News. It's Waffle here with your video game update. If you're a college football fan and you also like video games, then you're probably waiting for July 19th like everyone else when EA Sports College Football 25 comes out. People are already requesting the day off, just like they did for huge video game releases in the past like Halo or Call of Duty. You might think they're in their 20s, but nope, they're in their 40s and 50s. If you want to pre-order the game, you can do it now, but you might have to take out a loan if you want something other than the standard edition, because the deluxe edition will cost $100 and the MVP bundle over $150. Fortnite and Fallout will soon have a crossover. Cashing in on all the success of the Fallout TV show, the hype hasn't died off yet. Last week, Fortnite went on their social media pages and posted a teaser showing power armor from Fortnite in a cloud of orange dust in an industrial building. There's no other news on what's happening, but Fortnite's current season ends this Friday, May 24th making it a perfect time to tease new skins that might be coming in the next Battle Pass. Stay tuned every Wednesday for more video game updates. Care 11's Randy Shaver. This guy is beautiful. On the half assed Morning Show. I'm the only one that can sit here in the middle and root for both. I'm the only one that can do that in the world. Damn. Me. You so, 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 if Minnesota me. win, you gonna go to the locker room. Oh, man. yeah, where to get that? Yeah. If Boston win, you gonna go to the locker yeah, room. Yeah, where to get that? <laughs> yeah. I'm the only qualified that can do this. Poor Wolf, poor oh, Celtic. Damn. I'm coming in here with the half Minnesota, half uh, yeah, Celtic joint on. Ain't damn. nobody qualified to do what the ticket do. I got money on both blocks. I'm good over here. Kevin Garnett has become so strange. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show to the very well-rested Randy Shaver. Ah. Uh, and apologies. Brad friggin' Ryder. Brad Ryder, too. <laughs> yes, uh, Randy missed yesterday's broadcast. He uh, slept smooth through it. That doesn't happen very I often. I did. Yeah. Wow. I, I've been, I have been fighting a uh, sinus infection, not sleeping very well, for whatever reason, forgot to put my alarm on my phone, and then suddenly woke up yesterday at eight thirty and went, "Uh oh." Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Late, so. Yeah, that doesn't. It hasn't happened in years and years and years. But Randy just slept right through the show, and then he called yeah. Wapple when he woke up. He called Wapple to apologize. So Wapple, do you know what that means? I did. What does that mean? When Randy called you yesterday, he had morning wood. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> Finally. Oh. Dreams do I'm come true, boys. I'm always apologizing for that. All the time. Still does. At my age, I, I should never apologize for that at my age, but I did. I should give you a round of applause, actually. Yeah, take them when you can get them. Wapple gets yes, afternoon you wood. <laughs> I just get wood. I mean, we were concerned a little bit at first because you weren't I'm answering. I'm sure you were. You weren't answering the telephone, the text messages. We thought, what, did the guy, did he drop dead uh, at first? And that's, that's very rare for me to not realize my phone is buzzing and um, because I've had my kids call me in the middle of the night and I wake up without a problem. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, I did not hear that phone. So, again, I, I apologize. As concerned as we were, I, I, I got to know, um, boy, I bet it felt good when you woke up at 830, though. You know what I mean? Um, I, I bet it, it felt did, great it to get that. It, well, you probably woke up in a panic. Yeah, yeah, how confused were you? I did. It, it did and it didn't because when I woke up, I went, wow, I feel pretty rested. And then I went, uh-oh, and mm. grabbed my phone and looked at it. It said like 828 and three missed calls from WAP. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah. That's good stuff. Sounded like you needed it. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you just got to crash. I've been kind of suffering. I've been kind of suffering for a week, so. Felt good. I was finally uh, finally on some medicine to get me in the right place, so feel a lot better today. Well, and then all the thunderstorms and rain, you know, that makes you tired too. It does? It makes me tired. There's a lot of things that can make you tired, yes. Sometimes you just got to stay down. Okay, the latest, <laughs> the latest biggest game in Timberwolves history begins tonight at 730 over there at Target Center. Game one of the Western Conference Final Finals. Wolves slash Dallas Mavericks televised on TNT. Come on now, this is going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be, uh, the atmosphere is going to be over the top for sure. Brian, yes. It's like what we talked, <laughs> yes, it's like what we talked about with uh, Denver. If Dallas can sustain the first five, six minutes of the game tonight and not get uh, blown out of there, uh, it's going to be a great battle. Um, there's a lot of interesting matchups inside the overall matchup of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Wolves definitely have an advantage in the front court. I don't think there's any question. But mm-hmm. can they somehow find a way to defense Doncic the entire night? And the wild card to me is Kyrie Irving. If Kyrie Irving... He's a wild card uh, in yep. every aspect period. of... Uh, yeah. Yep, period. But offensively, if, if Kyrie Irving finds a way to get off in this series, the Wolves are going to have a hell of a time uh, winning this series. He's got a wild card really, personality, that uh, that Kyrie Irving. Okay, you want to talk matchups and whatnot. Here's a little series preview from the Star and Tribune. Matchups and predictions and whatnot. Uh, let me throw this your way, and you and Brad Ryder, uh, tell me what you think. Uh, first off, I have absolutely zero memory of this, and it's killing me. Uh, this is the Second time the Mavericks and Timberwolves will meet in the playoffs. It says here they met before in 2000, add two, where Dallas swept the five game series, three games to none. It's been killing me. I have absolutely zero memory of this. Huh. Well, that would have been a year or two before their Western Conference final run. So would that have been before? I think before they got Spreewell, but obviously KG was there. Yeah. I'm, I'm who else guess, would have been on that team? Well, you would have had, uh, I'm guessing, uh, with Gugliotta. And, sure, uh, and yeah. st- anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Luka Doncic, outstanding shooter, outstanding you know, star of that uh, Mavericks club. Uh, he leads the Mavs this postseason in scoring, assists, and rebounds. That's the part that grabbed me. He leads them in rebounds? Yeah. Well, that's where Randy was saying, too. I mean, the, the matchups inside are going to be intriguing because the Wolves should, they should dominate the boards. They should because if a guy like Doncic is leading their team in rebounding, and I know they traded for P.J. Washington, and that's a nice addition, yes, but they should dominate the rebounding. You know, they should have the rebounding edge in every game. If they don't, they're not going to win the game. If they, if they, if they go a game and Dallas out-rebounds them, they probably won't win the game. I was so shocked to learn look, look, that. Hey, he, yes, Randy. You know, Nick, I just looked this up from 2002. Now I remember Dirk Nowitzki killed him. 
<laughs> Dirk Nowitzki in 2002 okay. scored 39 in Game 3 at Target Center to close out that series. So yeah, it's, uh, um, I was, it was drinking a, a lot back between then. Nowitz- Davitsky and Garnett, as far as that series goes. That had to have been pretty early you know, the, in his career, too, then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, the German the Moses. About the, yeah. Yeah. The thing about the rebounding, you know, Gafford and P.J. Washington were picked up in, in uh, deadline trades for Dallas. And so they really didn't have a presence inside to speak of. Those two guys certainly fortified what they were trying to do inside. It made them a better defensive team. I mm-hmm. want to say in the last three months of the season, Dallas was one of the top defensive teams. Yeah. You know, just for that stretch of time. Yeah, we covered that a couple they, days ago. They, yeah, they were. Yep. They cha- they, they changed the, the makeup a little bit of what their team looks like. But to me, there's no question. This is, a, this is an opportunity for the Wolves to take advantage of their size, especially with, when you bring Nas Reed off the bench. And their athleticism, the the real, to me, the real key is can Edwards do a good job on Kyrie? Can he slow him down? Because mm-hmm. I think Jaden McDaniel against Doncic is going to be a hell of a matchup. For I don't know how many games they're going to play in this series, but that matchup is going to be one to really hone in on and watch because. Donkic saves a lot of his energy for the offensive end. He doesn't spend a lot of energy on the defensive end. And so Jaden's going to be challenged the entire series trying to stay in front of him. And even when you do that, the guy's amazing at putting the ball in the hoop. Uh, But it's that Kyrie matchup with Edwards that I think is going to be the real key. I'll just wrap up this matchup thing because they go position by position here. Uh, But, Randy, you already kind of did that. Um, yes, we covered this uh, the, in the four games the two teams played in the regular season. The Wolves won three, but the Mavericks didn't always have Doncic and Irving playing in those games. Um, uh, coaching edge, they give to Finchie over uh, Jason Kidd. The prediction by the Star Trib, it says here the Mavs' uh, backcourt is formidable. Doncic has battled injuries in these playoffs. That'd be kind of fun if those came back. <laughs> Uh, Town should have an easier time defending now that Durant and Jokic aren't in the scouting report. Uh, But Carl remains the X factor. As he goes, so go the Wolves in a lot of ways. The Mavs will try to stop A1 from day one. And in the end, they say Wolves in seven. And I know a couple days ago, Randy and Brad said they thought it might be a quicker series than that. I still believe that. Okay. Okay. You know, the other other matchup issue is... When Conley's on the floor, then who does Conley guard? Because if McDaniel's going to guard Doncic yeah. and Edwards is guarding, uh, you know, Irving, uh, uh-huh. Irving, then what is what? Where do you put Conley? I don't know. Hardaway likely is the likely choice. Oh yeah. But to me, that that's a mismatch in Dallas's favor. Not that Conley can't guard people; he certainly can. But they better be ready to do a lot of switching. Wise, yep, I think we're going to see a lot of that too. But that because you put McDaniel and Doncic, it, it's it. Uh, unfortunately for the Wolves, provides some matchup issues as well because of what what you do with Mike Conley. Just got a text message from Lawn Barber Jesus. He says, "I just passed the Hawaiian restaurant in Prior Lake, and their sign out front simply says Nas Reed." <laughs> so awesome! It's taking over. Uh, here is the Wolves starters. In that 2002 series with the Dallas Mavericks. Are you ready for this, boys? The Wolves Uh starters. Kevin Garnett. Chauncey Billups. Wally Zerbiak. This was sent to me by uh, Turkey Burger Jesus. Rasho Nesterovich. Rasho. (laughs) Rasho. And one of my favorite all-time Timberwolves. It's hard for me to talk about him because I love him so damn much. Sam Mitchell. Thank you, Turkey Burger Jesus. That was a long time ago, and still, to the, I just can't remember anything about There's going to be a big party in downtown Minneapolis. Is this, uh, is this tonight or, ju- or, or just Friday night? It says the Wolves rented out a parking lot, Kitty Corner to Target Center, for a series of beer parties. Oh, it says here for the Wolves, two, ho- two home games this week against the Dallas Mavericks. So it's going to be tonight, too. The Wolves put up a mural of Wolves players on the building next to Glicks to provide a backdrop for a watch party. 
Watch party, bruh. That sounds like a lot of fun. I might go Friday night. To quote my pal Dougie, we're going to get wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Brad, I, I'm a little surprised, and, and you can speak to this, I'm a little surprised that the Timberwolves didn't take a, uh, a chapter from the Twins and bring in a number of former Timberwolves players to be a part of these host parties or be on the floor, be, be seen, basically, um, for this, these playoff series. I mean, tonight would be uh, an incredible night to have Kevin Garnett sitting courtside. be an incredible night to have Sam Mitchell and Tony Campbell oh. and guys like that well, courtside. Yeah. Uh, and because the twins do such a great job of having their alumni being a part of the the hoopla of yeah. not just every day, but but postseason in particular. Yeah, I mean, a couple things. They they still might. I, I wouldn't be surprised if if they did. I think I saw before game um, six. I think Jr. Ryder was there. Jr. Jr. and Googs. Yep, yep, they were there, and so it wouldn't surprise me if they do that, if they do a little bit of that. The second thing, though, is is that, and this isn't a knock on their organ, organization, even though people think I do that all the time. This no, you never yeah, do that, you, Brad. This, this, this you never this, say this, anything <laughs> that leads us to this, believe that you have bitter feelings towards the organization. I'm just telling you from having spent Timber six Wolf. years in the Timber organization, Wolf. it's it's hard. It's hard because those guys don't live around here anymore, and they're not invested in the right. community. So. That's what makes that part of it difficult. So, again, that's not a knock on the organization. It's just that they're not, these people aren't around and they're not in the community anyway. Whereas a lot of those Twins players you were just talking about, they do live around here. They, they do stick around here. They do come back for Twins Fest every year. They do come back for, you know, the right. Twins Hall of Fame induction ceremony every year. So the Twins, naturally, they go to spring training every year. They've naturally been able to incorporate those people into their kind of their fabric. But when you don't go to the playoffs and don't make Western Conference final runs, you can't reconnect with those people as easily. But it wouldn't surprise me if some of those people are in the building tonight, though. Roastmaster Jesus has a theory that maybe because some of the players aren't big fans of the ownership that they don't really get involved um, since they've left. Right. Uh, I, I, I think that's I a little I overblown don't buy that. personally because, again, yeah. having spent time – in the organization, the, the former players don't care who the owner is, other than KG one. Might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. KG might have something. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Garnett yeah. said he's going to go to a couple games here during this series. He said he's going to come to Target Center. Okay. That's so cool. So there you go. We'll see where he sits. I doubt it'll be very close to Glenn Taylor. No, I don't think so. Maybe right across the way. It might be next to A-Rod and, and yeah. Mark Lore. But, but if he's in the building, that would be amazing. Absolutely. That would blow the roof off the place. Absolutely, it would. And I would love to see a cavalcade of old players come filing in for these games. You mentioned guys like Tony Campbell and Sam Mitchell and Wally and this and that and, and Googs. Oh, wow, that, that would blow my mind. It, uh, that, that would be a cool scene. Ace uh, Rocknut Jesus just sent it. He's got two new tattoos. Uh, one that says Nas Reed, you know, the Nas Reed one. And then he has a Timberwolves logo that says, bring your ass above it. That's everyone's, awesome. Everyone's gone crazy. Uh, I think Josh said it earlier. Uh, it's no longer a bandwagon. It's a party it's bus. It's a party bus yep. at this point. Uh, people are just, people who have never given two pumps about the Timberwolves <laughs> are all in on this action. And, and I get it. Um, I thought I got a text earlier from a, a fella who said, if the Wolves win at all, uh, he and his friends are going to get bring your ass tattooed on their body. That's a cool tattoo. I, I saw um, one of somebody I follow on Twitter. She got the inside of her bottom lip tatted saw that too. with Nas Reed. You got to do what you got to do. Sometimes so you have cool. to tattoo the inside of your lip uh, with the name of a basketball player. You just do. I love it. Uh, I was saying earlier. Heard, I, yes, Randy Shaver. I was going to say, Nick, I, I heard you when I mentioned Tony Campbell. You kind of sighed because I know you're a big Tony Campbell fan. Mm-hmm. When I put uh, out on Twitter um, after the Wolves won Game 7 that they should have Kevin Garnett at courtside for Wednesday's game, Tony Campbell actually responded to that tweet and uh, said, I wouldn't mind being there with him. Hashtag make it happen. Tony yeah. Campbell. Well, we, so we brought – one. When 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 I was there, we brought Tony Campbell back a few times. Mm-hmm. So yes, he, he's, I remember he's, that. He's been back. He's been back a few times recently, so he might be there tonight. Yeah, I remember that. 
Tony Campbell could score the basketball. Boy, he could score. Woo! You know? And he didn't have to, right? Just like uh, just like uh, um, Stuart Smalley told Michael Jordan. He said, you don't have to throw uh, the ball through the basket. <laughs> um, you don't have to dribble the ball faster than anybody else. Um, you can just be you, right, Josh? When Stuart Smalley gave Michael Jordan that pep talk. And it seemed to kind of work on Yeah. Uh, Tony Campbell didn't have to do those things to be important, but he did. Uh, I was mentioning earlier to everybody, uh, and you guys are, know very well that I have, I have lost my gourd on this program uh, quite a few times uh, over my dislike of the way Luka Doncic behaves on the basketball court. He will come close to actually crying like a child uh, when he's begging the officials to have everything go his way for the entire 48 minutes. Before someone says, they all do that. Yes, but some do it at a higher level than others, and Luka Doncic is the crowned king of crying to the officials. But I found out maybe why he carries around that extra anger. I found this out yesterday thanks to a listener who sent me a a picture. I I found out why maybe Luka is wound so tight. And this is something that some guys carry until the day that they die. Uh, the angst and anger over having a mother who was an absolute super fox. <laughs> a listener sent me a picture of Luka Doncic's mother yesterday, and maybe that's why he's wound so tight, because she is one pretty lady. Oh, geez, Jesus, when we were talking about the matchups, thought maybe that they should put Mike Conley on his mom, Luka's mom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you, know who would be, you know who would be really jealous, and that'd be my wife. Mm-hmm. Oh, she'd be pissed oh off. You know, she would you know be. Who else, you know who else might be coming to town then? Zach Wilson. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, oh yeah, Keep sure. Keep him out of the building. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep him out of the building. Luca, I understand where that anger is coming from. Um, because I had buddies growing up who had filthy hot mothers, and they were just, they were on edge because it's just, it's a stressful si- you All your buddies bust your balls about it until the day that you. I get it now. Lucha da- Doncha Tonchich, whatever his name, his mother, Wawa Wewa. Oh, great. Draymond Green will join the inside the NBA crew yes. for the entire Western God. Conference Finals. God, I just hate him. He's Why? so annoying. Somebody on Twitter floated out a funny conspiracy theory. They say that, you know, because this might be the last year of the NBA and TNT show, they're having Draymond on intentionally to make it easier for us to, you know, not miss it as much. <laughs> our lasting memory will be Draymond Green just spouting nonsense on the show. There has to be an explanation behind why a dildo like Draymond Green is being force fed to us as an analyst and a product pitch man. Steve Kerr or Steph Curry must have made some deals on his behalf or something. I just can't. I can't handle this guy. And boy, did he make a jackass out of himself when covering the Wolves' Nuggets series. Uh, how just elated he was that Rudy Gobert was being worked in game five or six, whatever it was. How Gobert was being worked by Jokic. Uh, Draymond Green made a fool of himself. And then, of course... When Gobert comes back and has a good game and they beat the Nuggets in Game 7, Green doesn't have any explanation for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's no if, love loss there, that's for sure. No, I need an explanation. Why he's being forced upon us as this new, you know. He isn't anywhere near fun and entertaining as guys like no. Barkley and Shaq or smart and likable like Kenny Smith and Ernie Johnson. Well, I get the network people think, well, we never know what's going to come out of his mouth, so that's mm-hmm. going to attract people to watch him. No, I don't think it has, Brad, that, but yeah. I take it that Shaq is not part of the the crew this week. I take it that he's the one that's I don't know what he's up to. Crew. Is he on tour? Is he uh, having a record? <laughs> Doesn't he have a new record out? When when he's been off the set and Vince Carter was on the set, I thought Vince Carter was really he's great. Good. Yeah, um, Vince Carter does just he fine. Joined, he joined... He joined those guys. It's too bad that Vince Carter wouldn't be the person that, that would. They might just be adding another be person. They might be having five instead of four. Who knows? So Gobert and McDaniels became the first pair of Timberwolves teammates to be named to the NBA All-Defensive teams in the same season. Gobert and a first-team uh, All, uh, how do I say that? A first-team All-Defensive player. McDaniels was named to the second team. Good for those characters because they both play those roles very well. 
San Antonio Spurs rookie, uh, rookie, how do you say it, Victor Wembayami, the first rookie to end up on the uh, NBA All-Defensive First Team. That's just wonderful. Total disaster for the Indiana Pacers last night. Oh, total God, disaster. If I'm a Pacer fan, I'm dying this morning. They had why game in the one. world did he not? Didn't he not have a timeout there? He, with like eight he seconds did. Left he to actually the ball to he, half court. He took responsibility. Carlisle took responsibility for that after the oh. game. He said, "This loss is on me." He said, "I should have called a timeout and advanced the ball." He said, it, "Just exactly. you know, just blame it on me." So he. Give him a little credit. He took the blame, but yeah, he should have called a timeout there. Indiana had game one of the Eastern Conference Finals in the effing bag, but they turned the ball over a couple times with just seconds left, and then Boston hit a three to tie it as the game expired, and then the Celtics won it in overtime, and it was miserable. I mean, the the play, the inbounds play that goes off of Siakam's hands, it, it looked like he was the first and only choice on that play, and didn't leave them very many options well, to try to get the ball in. And, and, that, and that's the last place you want to throw one. the ball is right directly toward exactly, the opponent's basket. in front basket. of the basket. Exactly. That was just a just a bad design. But you got to give Jalen Brown and the Celtics credit. That inbounds play and that shot was Siakam literally right in his grill without his hands up either. He knew he didn't want to foul. But that shot was amazing. And, you know, then – Tatum just took over in the overtime. I think he scored 10 points in the OT, and, and that was it. That's just a crushing loss for Indiana. Because that sucked. They easily, they easily could be up 1-0, should be up 1-0 in the series. LaMelo Ball and the Charlotte Hornets are at the center of a new lawsuit filed in North Carolina. A woman claims her 11-year-old son tried to get an autograph from LaMelo, but LaMelo sped off in his motor vehicle and ran over the kid's foot for him. Oh, damn. He does not like to obey traffic laws. Oh, is, this a, is he a repeat offender? Yeah, there's um, below that, like the picture of the kid in a cast, um, somebody posted like all of the times he's left um, the stadium or whatever, and it's <laughs> he never follows the, the lights. He just runs red lights every single time. Is he really? Yeah, he peels out of there. It's so weird. Like, what are you doing? The lady says that LaMelo's motor vehicle ran over her 11-year-old child's foot, and the woman says, as God is her witness, the kid's foot is broken in half. Oh, my God. This apparently went down a number of months ago at a Hornets game. Angel Joseph is the kid's name. He was waiting near the player exit, hoping to get an autograph. LaMelo drove off like a bat out of hell, they say here. And uh, she says, the mom says, they ran over the kid's foot. Uh, the mom says the injuries aren't just physical. Her son has been depressed ever since the alleged incident. The family's attorney said, this is his hero. Oh. His idol. Well, there's And he got problem. run over by, this sounds shady to me. Yeah. Who has the metal balls or hero? If I, had I, was, I was, I was going to say that's your first problem if your kid's idol is him. But anyway, if this I had a choice shady. between having my foot run over by a vehicle or listening to LaMelo's dad on television, <laughs> I've got two feet. Let's do this twice. Right. Oh, I'm so glad we don't hear from him anymore. Absolutely. Or, or maybe uh, it, they just don't publicize it as much and he's still out there. I don't know. It seemed like forever, every day there was something new. It was him. a terrible stretch there where people wanted to put that uh, the old man on television. Absolutely. So uh, they want a bunch of money. Uh, it's worth noting there are multiple videos of LaMelo speeding away on that night and all the fans are behind barriers. But still, the mom says the organization is on the hook for this, and and uh, I don't know. It sounds this, this smells a little weird to yeah, me. It sounds kind of squirrely to me. Uh, all right, the twins should try and have more players only meetings because one day removed from everyone sitting down together and doing a little kumbaya deal, uh, they came out and crushed the Washington Nationals ten nothing. That felt good. And also. There's been some real reckless talk around here lately about how maybe the rally sausage has run its course. No, it has not. What I read today is that the sausage got left behind on accident when they headed out for this road trip. (laughs) So they lose all three games in Cleveland. They get pumped in the first game of this year Washington series. And then the sausage was overnight mailed to Washington. It was in the dugout for last night's game. And look what happened. (laughs) You are kidding me. It was overnight mailed. 
<laughs> That's the <laughs> story I read in the St. Paul paper. That is awesome. Imagine having that responsibility, going to, going to the post office to overnight mail a sausage to a baseball stadium in Washington. You know, and you wonder how old this thing gets and how bad it gets before it's all of a sudden a crime to mail that across state lines. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just yeah, it's just all of a sudden it's a it's a hazard of some sort. It has it's, arms and it's legs. Start at the this next point. pandemic. I like this one Twitter account. Uh, they posted just the Undertaker waking up and then twins rally sausage. <laughs> <laughs> the sausage lives. What you're not buying that story, Brad? I'll, I guess I'll buy it. It just seems a little bit too fabricated. I don't know. They overnighted the sausage, Randy. <laughs> Now, it doesn't hurt that you're playing the Washington Nationals, well, yeah. too, by the way, with Pat, with Patrick Corbin on the hill, who's way past, you know, being good. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean that that helps a lot too. So, Byron Buxton got the dong out twice. He drove in three runs. Joe Ryan pitched seven scoreless innings, and so, so did the did the sausage take PTO during the Yankee series, or what happened there? Well, it was the Yankees. Okay. I mean, a sausage can only accomplish so much. It, the, right. the, the, the rally That's sausage right. has accomplished a lot this season. Don't take the Yankees season, uh, the Yankees series, and put that blame on the friggin' sausage. It's more effective <laughs> against a team that's under five hundred. Sure. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to need a 500 We're, we're going to need a whole rally van <laughs> yeah. filled with sausages <laughs> to ever beat the Yankees. We, <laughs> or or the Dodgers whenever they play them. <laughs> so the seven game losing streak is over. Now they play a noon game today to wrap up the series with the Nationals. Uh, some cat yeah. going by Jake Irvin pitches for Washington. Bloomington kid. Bloomington, Minnesota. Kid. He's from Bloomington? Hmm. I'd never admit yes, that if is. I was him. Yeah. <laughs> Simeon Woods Richardson up next for the Twins. Here's a video you might get a kick out of. Corey Seager hit a home run last night for the Texas Rangers on the road against the Philadelphia Phillies. And the baseball landed directly uh, in one fan's uh, bucket of nachos. And it sent chips and cheese tumbling onto the ball field. Deep out to right field. It is gone. Or is it in? It looked like it knocked a fan's food into the stadium. Looked like Corey must have gotten some nachos right there. Unless they threw the food at the ball, it seems to me. (laughs) And they might have. Maybe they knocked it off that railing. It looks like there's some of that nacho cheese right on that railing there. Calm down. <laughs> we'll get you some, Val. I mean, I could use a little bite. After review, the call is overturned. It is a home run. Well, I didn't know there was a review. What was the review about? Well, I think maybe they were maybe they were concerned it hit the top of the railing yeah. or didn't hit above where the home run is. The nachos were in the field of play, <laughs> yeah. maybe? Yeah, they wanted to see if the fan threw the nachos at the ball, too. Yeah. Oh, there's a ball coming at me. Hey, throw these nachos at it. Stop it. <laughs> Turns out the nachos were over the fence. Nacho cheese ended up all over the outfield wall. Yeah. And they had to send, send someone out there to lick it off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, the, the 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 winning pitcher in that game last night, Ranger Suarez, is nine and zero with an ERA of one point three six for the Phillies. He is the best pitcher in baseball right now. Mm. He's been kind of a journeyman; hasn't really been someone you talk about. But his start, I, I want to say, I read a couple of things the other day that his start is like historic, the way that he's gotten out of the gates. He is nine and zero which is by far the best record in baseball at this point wow. with an ERA under 1.4. Last he, night he threw seven innings, struck out 10 to win that game. Didn't he have a great showing in the World Series last year too? You know, he may have. Um, I just it, I'm just saying he's not he's not even their one top two starters. Mm-hmm. Nola and Wheeler mm-hmm. are their top starters in Philadelphia. But mm. this guy's having an incredible All-Star season. Well, that's great. Good for him. Pittsburgh Pirates announced that they're inducting Barry Bonds into the Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Fame. They should. Yeah. Some they people should. some people don't want any good things ever to happen to Barry Bonds because he took steroids. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was before Bonds really... Yeah. You know, 
Well, the, the right, right. We, but you, so. you understand what I mean. He, he, yes, it, in no, some folks' it. minds, Barry Bond should just live alone in a cave until the day that he dies <laughs> because he took steroids <laughs> like everybody next else. Door to, next door to Pete Rose. Right. They should both just go <laughs> right. away. Oh, real quick, back to oh. um, back to basketball. I guess they um, they made today officially Wolf's Back Day. Official. Official. Is it a f- official day? It's, it's super official. official. What does that mean, Wolf's Back Day? I don't know. You know how they like did like a Taylor Swift day when she came to town. They made it the kind of like a holiday. So I you're guess, talking about like maybe the the mayor the, of the, Minneapolis? The governor, yes. Did the governor proclaim it? <laughs> Yes, he did. Yep. Josh, which which would you choose, Wolves back or Wolves front? <laughs> <laughs> that is a very tough question. <laughs> I'm going to say back. Back? Yeah. I just feel there'd be some intimidation there that I couldn't handle if, you, uh, if it was anything else. You're mixing it up. You're yeah, going back. I'm going back. Well, it's it, it's all official, as you heard uh, closet Canadian Ashley say out loud. It's all <laughs> official. Uh, well, here's who uh, here's who Barry Bonds is going into the Pirates Hall of Fame with uh, Jim Leland, longtime wonderful manager. Yes, for... I'm kind of surprised he wasn't in there already. Yeah, that's what I was about to say too. I'm yeah. surprised he wasn't there already. He's uh, he's no yeah. kid. Jesus Christ, Jim Leland's got to be 85 years old. And uh, All Star catcher Manny Sanguian. San... Yeah, Manny Sanguian, great player. This will One happen. One of those Willie Stargell years. Yeah, this will happen come um, August 24th. Barry Bonds. What, ah. made, what made Manny Sanguian so great? Nick? What, what Do you remember Manny Sanguian? I remember I him. I'm going to take a guess if yes. nobody else has one. I'm going to say uh, because he was hung like a, 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 a <laughs> an no. Austrian no. plow elk. No. Oh, I bet that's impressive. <laughs> no. Manny, uh, San, Manny Sanguian basically did the splits oh, behind yep. home plate. <laughs> he was flat to the ground. <laughs> He was He'd the have one leg out. I can. That's correct. He's the only catcher I can. So Google it. Are you sure you're not mistaking him for Tony Pena? Sanguian no. did it first. Nope. Okay. Just Sanguian did it first. And, okay. Fine. And maybe Nick. Manny maybe Nick's reason is I, the reason why he did it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching as a kid, going because obviously that's not even close to what you were taught as a catcher. And I played a little bit of catcher when I was growing up, but to see a guy. Behind home plate, be able to a handle the pitches, but be able to make the throws that he did from that position. The way he was set up behind home plate was amazing. Yes, I vividly remember Tony Pena holding that position. But you're probably right; he probably was inspired by Manny Sanguian to do the splits, like you were explaining while uh, playing uh, catcher. Uh, back to the Twins and the Yankees and the Rally Sausage. Here's a listener who says the Twins could play the Yankees at a sausage party <laughs> <laughs> and still not beat them. So I don't want, I don't want to hear any more talk oh, of blame being put on the Rally Sausage for the Twins not being able to do something they haven't done in 20 effing years. Ah. Uh, Stanley Cup, Game 1 of the NHL's Eastern Conference Final Finals takes place in New York City tonight. Televised on ESPN, the defending Eastern Conference champion Florida Panthers face the New York Rangers. Who disgust me. They do. They disgust me. I hated them in 94. I hate them today. Uh, Not sure if this matters to anybody, but no matter what... No matter which is how you say it, team wins the Stanley Cup this year. It will be a first this century. Hmm. The Dallas Stars most recently lifted the cup back in 1999. I remember that series very, very well. I mentioned the Rangers in 94. You know, Rangers haven't won it since 94 when they basically just borrowed Every member of the Edmonton Oilers dynasty yep. signed him to a contract and said, here, do it in America. <laughs> it was repulsive to watch. The Oilers haven't won the Cup since 1990. And then the uh, Florida Panthers have never won the Cup. Are you cool with all that? If a new team goes ahead and lifts the... Not too shabby. You guys don't even effing care. <laughs> you oh, don't care great. at all. Admit that you don't care. 
I care less than the NBA right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'll admit that. Ah. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then I got this text message. It's just, my, Josh, come over and just, just check my pulse. It's, it's, <laughs> my blood pressure has skyrocketed. Uh-oh, is it about a movie? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Recruiter Jesus has to text in. I'm already aggravated by talking about the 1994 New York Rangers and just that franchise as a whole. Then Recruiter Jesus has to say, did you even hate the Rangers in the greatest hockey movie ever, Mystery Alaska, (laughs) which is such a cauldron of liquefied feces is what that movie is. Yeah, who are you rooting for, the Rangers or Mystery, when you watch that movie? Despite the appearance of Burt Reynolds, it's a 55-gallon cauldron of lava-hot liquefied feces. Who was I rooting for? Yeah. I was rooting for a plane to crash into the arena or the rink. And kill everyone. Kill everyone. Even Burt Reynolds. That's how, that's, that's how bad that movie was. Mystery Alaska or uh, Iron Claw. You have to watch one of them again. Iron Claw. <laughs> Wapple. Wapple feels redemption. <laughs> Wapple just sat up in his chair. Yep. He knew he'd come around. <laughs> Good God. Just took a couple months. We're there. But all hockey movies suck, except for uh, how do you, uh, how do you call dogs. it to uh, Slapshot? What about Miracle? Oh, right. Yeah. Slapshot and Miracle, all the rest of it, all of them sucked. You might like Goon. Oh, yeah, Goon was good. Goon was good. You might, you might think that was pretty funny. Never saw it! Yeah, that's why I said you might like it. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> what about MVP, Most Valuable Primate, where the monkey plays hockey? The ladies beat Boston last <laughs> night in the ladies' final. <laughs> okay. Minnesota's gals beat the Boston gals 3 nothing. Uh, so that evens their, their series. Is it 5 or 7? State of hockey, my ass. Home ice advantage. That way. They split up in Boston, right? Yes. Now they have home ice advantage. You're right, Randy Shaver. Yes. Let's win it. Win it here. Dude. Randy, were you upset um, to find out? Maybe you weren't paying attention. Uh, sports betting here in Minnesota will have to wait at least one more year? Yep. It died. We we knew that was going to happen. Oh, we did. It was going to well, happen. It's it's not. It's just they, not a priority right now. They, just, and it's they not, can't figure I mean, it out. Well, it's not about that so much, Brad. Is that they had other things going on in the legislature that that took precedence, and there were some other issues with filibusters by the Republicans that slowed some things down. They ran out of time on a number of different items. Sports betting was one of them. So. It's just not. It's just not at the top of mind of all of these people. Yes, there's some support there for sure, but it's just not. It's just not there yet, and it's disappointing because there's a. We're surrounded by states that have legalized sports betting, and uh, once again, we'll sit another year without having the opportunity to do the same thing as everybody else. But a little a little bit of what I'm saying is cynicism, too. They haven't been able to figure it out for years. There's 39 states in the country who have it now. I mean, at, at some point, is it going to be a priority? Or are we just going well, to I mean, it? I, I got a feeling that it will be once you really look at the number. I mean, when you start losing the opportunity for – the income that it can bring in, because that's why these states that's, have it, done it's this. It's already happening. They get a yeah. piece of the pie. That's right. They get a piece of the pie, and until until Minnesota decides that that's going to be something that's important to them, it's probably, you know. And, and I think also we have uh, the, the, uh, the tribes in this state and gambling with – it's a complicated issue in this state anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I read that big article about Canterbury and how it's in trouble financially, too. And so there's a lot of things that are brewing around sports betting in general in Minnesota that make it a difficult situation right now. We could do, we could do a whole show on this. I do, I do an entire lecture on this in my sports ethics class. It is, in short, it is the tribes and the political power that they have here. You know, for those who, uh, who uh, uh, really want this to happen, I'm sorry. Um, for me personally, I, I, I couldn't give two pumps. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess maybe next year. Uh, Josh, what do you think of this? Uh, back to the rally sausage and the Twins and the Yankees. Uh, the next time the Twins play the Yankees, 
a player should eat the sausage and absorb its power. Yeah, <laughs> my gosh. I think they would God. die. Like when Josh eats uh, gas station hard-boiled eggs. You absorb the oh, power. Man. That'll, oh. that'll do the and trick. That power, and that power is released about 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power to repel anyone near me. <laughs> <laughs> and if I remember from the story, Josh, it's released at a high rate of speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes on forever, too. <laughs> that would be one way to and cut down on the strikeouts. Say, hey, if you strike out, you got to take a bite when you come back into the oh. dugout. <laughs> oh, shoot. That would be a good motivator. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is Pumbaa clear the savannah. Yep. <laughs> Finally, before we go... Gentlemen, uh, one of my favorite all-time athletes has retired. Takeru Kobayashi, one of the greats, six-time Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest champion. He's hanging up his abilities to eat competitively. He says he's ready to focus on his well-being and repair the damage he's done to his body <laughs> Over the past two wow. decades. Oh, I bet there is speaking a lot of to damage. That, you know, speaking of that high-powered evacuation, <laughs> high, high speed. Of, <laughs> of, <laughs> imagine how many times that yes. guy's wished he had a seatbelt no. on his toilet. Yeah. Oh, oh my. Imagine oh, get in an elevator with him after the hot dog eating contest. Oh, God. Josh, do you remember the days of Kobayashi versus Chestnut? Those were awesome. Yeah. I, I miss those days. It's like we, Ollie Frazier. We were split uh, in that department. A Josh, big Joey Chestnut fan. Yeah, America. I was a massive Kobayashi fan. I was before Chestnut came along. But I, then you just you just you just abandoned Kobayashi. Well, I I went for the American. What are you gonna do? Of course, Kobayashi was pretty great though. I I, I can't watch it as I love the announcers. Uh, they're they're great. Oh. I can't watch it like I used to. Oh, it's gross. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> I don't know what it is, but now. It, Watching them barf it up and eating it back, I just can't do it anymore. It's a little oh, too much. The water, dipping the buns in the water. Yeah. Soggy Soggy buns. It, it is difficult to watch, and it gets harder for me every year as well to watch that it, it, with the... I, I think it's gotten worse because of the HD cameras. It just oh, really yeah. picks up everything. Maybe there's something to that. <laughs> really Remember, zooming in on it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the drama... Kobayashi got in some kind of contract dispute with the folks over there at Major League Eating. Yeah. Who I think their office is in a van, you know. <laughs> uh, but he got in a contract dispute with them, and he wasn't invited to the Nathan's Hot Dog thing. But he, remember this, he shows up, he's standing in the front row, and then he stormed the stage. I'll kill every one of you bastards! And they had to cuff him. <laughs> He says he has lost his appetite and ability to smell food. Mm -hmm. Like, he's he's oh. damaged himself. He really messed himself oh, up. No. Maybe he did. It's yeah, kind of surprising this doesn't happen more often, or you don't hear about it. Maybe it does, we just don't hear about it. I was just thinking, I, I got the difference. Back when we first started watching it, we were on the boost cruise. Yes. And so we used to do that on the 4th of July, and that... We don't do that anymore. That's right. got to be the difference, right? That's what killed it for us, I yeah. guess. Yeah, we, we, we had a kind of a tradition of watching it on the stupid yeah, boat. Yeah, it was like a watch party. Yeah. Everybody was watching and it. And then we started doing it on the 3rd and the end of June. And, and then, it, yeah, but uh, we had a lot of laughs with that. Kobe, I hope he's he's okay. Uh, he sounds like he, he really mangled himself. Contract dispute. It's yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. good. Oh, man. I just figured out a way we could get sports betting done. What do we do? Is this going to come off like one of your lectures over there at the school? Because we only no. got like one minute here. No, that's fine. We could bring we could bring the rally sausage over to the Senate chambers and just sit it there until they get a deal done. <laughs> <laughs> that might do it. It might work, Brad Ryder. Yes. All right, you dirty bastards. We're going to uh, take a little break, ski, but thank you, Randy Shaver, and thank you, Brad Ryder, and we'll talk to you Should tomorrow. Be a fun night. It's going to be Should something, be Randy show. Shaver. Let's be dicks about it. Everybody be a dick tonight. <laughs> Let's go, for Christ's sake. Gas. We don't get this opportunity. For we'll talk to you guys later. We'll be right back on the Half Fast Morning Show. Half Fast Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X.
Our technicians are geared up and ready to make sure your system is running reliably this summer. Regular maintenance from standard heating helps prevent costlier breakdowns in the future, and we know they always happen at the worst times. Summer's coming, but don't sweat it. Stay cool with standard heating and air conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com. What's up, everyone? It's Reality Steve, your number one source for all things Bachelor Nation and reality TV. Every day, I'm giving you the -the behind-the-scenes juice and your info on all your Bachelor Nation stories and also interviewing some of your favorite reality stars. My name has been synonymous with spoilers, but I'm so much more than that. Give me a listen. The Reality Steve Podcast, part of the Believe Network. Just search B-L-E-A-V on YouTube or wherever you listen. The 93X half-assed morning show. Oh. All of them, bro. I hear you. It is so cold in this garbage radio studio that Josh and I are going to sue the company. <laughs> I don't. We are. I don't understand. Is it cold over there too, dude? It's no. freezing, and then I got this air vent above me, and it just blows down the back of my neck. So it that's is why so I wear cold. my hood. I can't feel my fingers. My nose is running like a six-year-old at a bus stop in the dead of winter. I broke wind in here a few minutes ago, and Josh and I huddled around. <laughs> We huddled around it for warmth. It was it was terrible. It eventually, it froze and just fell to the ground and shattered into a million stinky pieces. It's terrible. I'm rarely cold, but it's insane in here. I think my fingers are going to fall off. Welcome back to the Half-Assed Morning Show. Hopefully you're not freezing to death like we are on May 22nd, I think is the date today. All right. We'll try to cut through it. We will. Ah. <sighs> Thirteen percent of men would take a penny from a urinal. Who's down? I'll pass. There's. I don't think there's too much. I mean, I would pull a drowning baby from a urinal, but I don't think I'd take a penny out a of it. A penny? Either. No thanks. Thirteen no, percent of men. I'm. I don't know what the ladies. I don't know where they were when this question was thrown <laughs> around. But thirteen percent of men would take a penny from a urinal. I mean, I wouldn't even pick one up off the ground simply because. It hurts getting back up, you know? Like, <laughs> I have to have my wife pick up stuff now. I, I can't get down there and back up as easy as I used to. Five dollars? Do you grab five dollars out of a urinal, Josh? Uh, out of a urinal? It's That's wet. Gross. Yeah. It's wet. And it's coming on like a turbo vet. And it's got stranger pee on it. Oh, I, I know some people pee. are into that, but I'm not. Hundred dollars. You grab a piss-soaked one hundred dollar bill. anybody see me do it? No. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll take that. No, I'd bucks. happily do it. I would One think it was hun- a prank of some sort, and like uh, Logan Paul's going to jump out with a camera and a bunch of his cronies or something. <laughs> a penny. Someone put together a, a questionnaire. What do they uh, call it these days? A poll. Ask dudes if they'd take a penny if they saw it in a urinal. 490 people weighed in. Well, they say people here, but then they make it sound like it was only me- I don't know. Well, it's a uh, urinal. So. Yes, women don't encounter yeah. those too often. Oh, they don't count those. They don't have urinals. That's right. Nope. 490 dudes weighed in. 428 of them said no, but still 13%, 62 guys said yes. They were trying to be the funny guy, right? I'm the wild man. Yeah, probably. I don't think they legitimately would, even probably. if you're very down on your luck. You probably you have to factor that in. Yeah. I want to. I want to be the different guy. Ashley, have you ever had to make potty in a guy's urinal? Uh yes, I have once. In an actual urinal. Yeah. Oh wow. Tell us all about that. You just like um, hover. Yeah. Huh. Well, but like, tell us the circumstances behind such a thing. Oh, um, just at like a concert and it's super busy, so you just go into the men's room because it's not ever busy in there. Yes. I've seen that move before. Yeah, I, I've even had like um, like boyfriends or guy friends in the past like go into the bathroom before and be like, hey, a girl's coming in. Is everybody cool with that? Like she's really got to pee. And I, they're usually super nice about it. Oh, yeah. The old uh, the old 80s rock concerts back when I was a kid, we couldn't wait for a gal to walk into the men's room. I don't that, think it that, worked that was, so well the other way around. That, nope. was, no. that, that was exciting, wasn't it, Josh? When oh, a couple yeah. of hot chicks at the Bon Jovi show would walk into Heck our... Yeah. I thought that was hot. Uh, the other way around... If no, we you did, might walk out in handcuffs. Yeah. No. A couple of officers escorting you out. Yeah. So you peed in a... Uh, 
Josh, remember the hilarious video, speaking of rock concerts, remember the hilarious video, I think this was from Sweden or some godforsaken place, there was a big outdoor uh, death metal show or something, and the dude mistook the men's trough for a sink to wash his oh, hands oh, in. Yeah, that was so Ow. gross. It, it was, it, you shouldn't react until you know, it, it, was, it was an odd setup. It really was. Um, if you remember, Josh, you really couldn't tell what was what, uh, if I remember correctly. The, 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 your, the troughs did look quite similar to the hand-washing uh, station. It was different than you're used to here, yeah. Yes, certainly, again, it was some foreign uh, land. But the dude, that wasn't water, that was piss. And he scrubbed his hands, and he's washing very thoroughly in strangers' urine. And then he turns back to this video camera, and everyone's laughing at him. He didn't understand why. Well, what about, say, when you were a kid? Did you ever chew gum? Did you ever throw gum into your mouth that was on the... On a desk no. or on the gr- you weren't you weren't that type of a kid. Not at um, all. I probably mm-hmm. took it a step further um, because I'd ask somebody for a piece of gum and they'd be like, "The only one I have is in my mouth." Like, do you want that? And I I don't know. I just I hated when people s- said that. I don't know. It just like bothered me. So I was like, "Yeah, I do. I'll take it." And then I just take it from him and pop it in my mouth. You did? Yeah, but that's probably why I had mono in ninth grade. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you, you, you're claiming this was a one-time thing? No, you, I did it a couple times. A couple of times. Definitely, yeah. Well, but I wouldn't call that taking it a step further. I think picking up gum off the ground or off a desk is much more disgusting than fresh out of someone's yap. Because what's the difference between that and kissing someone on the yap? Yeah, I know, point. it seems more... I mean, it's like I... I once used my wife's toothbrush by accident, and I thought I was going to barf. And I don't know. I don't know what the difference R- really? is. Really? Just you found oh, that wow. to be really repulsive. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. It depends on who you are. I mean, one of the worst things. Uh, I'm usually not that intimate within her mouth, you know. And they take that however you'd like. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that's deep in there, you know. And I don't know what for whatever reason it grossed me out. Plus, her toothbrush is disgusting. It really is. Yeah, don't you say she smashes it down until it's flat as a board? Well, yeah, and it's just covered in, like, weeks-old, crusty toothpaste. Oh, yeah, yeah, the crusty. (laughs) I lost my toothbrush for, like, a month, and I was just steadily using my my boyfriend's uh, electric toothbrush. And eventually, he was like, are you you still using my toothbrush? He thought it was going to be, like, a one-time deal. And then he went and bought me my own, like, uh different bristle that I could put on there to brush my teeth. Uh, You ever heard of this? You you ever heard of this? Going Dutch in a porta potty. The man stands up, the lady sits down at the same time. Uh, My wife, listener says, my wife and I do that at concerts, and we get a standing ovation uh, when it's over. Yeah, why not? There's two places, right? It's kind of like playing Well, if it's the two of you in the bathroom alone, you you would go ahead and haul the vag out in front of a line of guys and you and your boyfriend uh, sit on the... Oh, wait a minute. Porta potty. I was still picturing a urinal. I yeah. was still picturing a urinal. Oh, in a porta potty, sure. Yeah, uh, she, yeah she, she can sit down can and, and he's playing the, a dangerous game of operation there with a the urine stream. Yes. Okay, that that makes it... I thought we were still talking uh, urinals, but porta potty... Well, I, but my God, are you really in that big of a hurry? Okay. In a porta potty, sure. Go ahead. In a urinal, I was picturing a crowd standing around. And... Yeah, that, okay. I'm following you now. That might be kind of fun to see if you can do it without, you know, causing any damage. I've <laughs> asked my boyfriend, like, it's usually when we've been drinking. I'm like, dude, see if you can pee between my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, you're involved in all kinds of things over there, apparently. (laughs) You guys are wild. (laughs) All right. Should we just keep going? I've got more scenarios for you. Okay. None of you are the type when you were kids or even today to grab a a piece of gum up off the floor or off a desk. Mm -mm. Okay. How about this? Uh, Little kid. Dog had puppies, uh, and the little kid, curious, uh, sucked on the mother dog's nipple along with the puppies. Oh, <laughs> no. Just to, just to see what it was like. 
Nope, hasn't no, happened. No, no desire. Yeah, that kid's never going to be able to complain about what's for dinner, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mom and dad are going to bring that up. Yep. So wait, everybody, hold on. Gather around. Mr. Sucked on the dog's nipple. This is can't eat his vegetables. It's too good for him. Okay. Yeah, he's never living that down. Now, yeah, that follows you. Little kid. I was trying to be, you know, a little kid, five, six years old. Dog had puppies, and she kind of became obsessed with it. I was acting like the puppies. I was That was her gimmick. A few years later, I remembered what I'd done, and I was disgusted, and I still am to this day. She breastfed off of a dog. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All right, I, could, could, a... could you cut through this, Josh? I once vomited on myself and my bed, and I just went back to sleep. Oh, no. I mm. guess if I was insane, drunk, or really, really <laughs> sick. Yeah. But just on a normal day, uh, no. That smell would just keep coming back, yeah. no matter what. I, like that would be... Much. If I was, I mean, it would have to be something special going on. Where I, I could, didn't think of that. Insane drunk, I like the way you put that, or really, really sick. Then, I, yeah, you might not have a choice. But we have to play it out as if it's just any other night. Yeah, if it was just like a regular night, no way. All right, what about a waffle stomp? Oh. Never. Gross. Yeah. Now, this is a story of a waffle stomp. Uh, nine years old, had a sleepover. <laughs> Sounds like this is a little girl. I, I pooped in their shower and stomped it down the drain because I had too much, uh, too much anxiety to poop in the toilet and didn't want my friend to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Some bad Just poop anxiety it there. Down their drain. Uh, 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 <laughs> Does anybody here have any level of poop anxiety aside from constipation issues? A little bit, yeah. You have uh, poop anxiety. I sure do, but not not to that level. Okay, well, I, I would I would much rather have someone know what I'm doing in there versus finding out that I went to that extreme. <laughs> you just stomped it down the drain. <laughs> Why are you wiping your foot and your butt? What happened there? So you're saying if you're at somebody else's house, you're anxious about using their toilet? I would be a little bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely, 100%. Can you go on a vacation? What does that mean? Like, can you go to the bathroom when you're on vacation and you're out of your house? Uh, Yeah, I actually prefer that. Well, no, I mean, on vacation, sometimes things just don't work. But, yeah, I don't don't have any anxiety. You have no problem in the hotel toilet or the resort toilet? No. Okay, right. It's if you you know the people, you don't want them to. So this gal, she has poop anxiety. She goes in the shower. I can't imagine this in a million years, but... She goes in the shower, drops wolf bait, <laughs> stamps it down the drain. That's so absolutely <laughs> awful. I, nine-year-old kid, though, she says, I didn't realize until it was too late that hot water and poop are not a nice combination, and the entire house was filled with the fumes of my steaming <laughs> feces. <laughs> I blocked the rest of the night out from trauma. I don't remember a thing beyond that. That's pretty sick, bruh. Yeah, that, it's not good. Could you eat a frog's gallbladder for a nickel? For a nickel? No. If it was like fried or something. Yeah. Here's another little gross. Dissecting frogs in biology class. Someone dared me to eat the frog's gallbladder for a nickel. I did it. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, in that situation, no. No, I'm not eating. I just Any. remember how bad that all smelled. Yeah. Dissecting the pigs and things like that. Oh, the pig. Oh, the that pigs. was awful. Yeah, I had to physically leave the room just because I, I couldn't handle being around those. It smelled so bad. The frogs, I really, I think that's all we ever tackled back in school was frogs. Oh, we didn't do the pig fetuses? No memory of that whatsoever. We did a cow eye, pig fetus, uh, worm. Yeah. When okay. Guys- oh, okay. I remember a worm too. Frogs and worms. Um, and I do remember that the smell was something when the frogs were cracked open. Yeah, I thought that was pretty gross. When you guys did the pig dissection, did your science teacher also, because I guess they have really long intestines, intestines give you science um, teachers do? Or, the, <laughs> the, the the pigs. Oh. Okay. Um, they gave us extra credit if we jump roped with the intestines. Oh, <laughs> none of that ever happened. Yeah, because like if Are you th- did it correctly, it would like hold together and be strong enough. 
Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we did not have any intestine double dutch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more gross scenario. We're playing gross scenarios this morning. One more. Could you do this? New Year's Eve. Drunk in a car on the way home. As a passenger, of course. Uh, we were followed by the cops. We were all underage. Oh, no. You're thinking, we're busted. Cops behind them, underage drunks in a car. Uh, I really had to puke. We couldn't pull over. Oh, no. Couldn't pull over. Cops are right behind us. I couldn't hold it. I puked inside my sweatshirt, and I wore it all the way home. Oh. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, I could do yeah, that. Yeah, in that situation, y- you have to. Back in high school? I don't Based want to. Uh, alternative? I don't want a, uh, how do you call it, a uh, minor uh, possession consumption kind of a thing. Oh, and then all your friends hate you, too, because you were the reason they got pulled over. You got us busted, dude. Yeah. yeah. And you threw up all over yourself. That would suck. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. And how many drinks would you say you consume each week? Socially, about four to six. Alone in the dark while crying to Adele, a hundred. On 93X. You're an unbelievable crowd. We're about done here. We got on the subject of gross activities, gross behavior. And a lot of it was, you know, things that you might have done when you were a little kid. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Kids are stupid. I was no different. Uh, The conversation actually started uh, when we read that 13% of men admitted that they would take a penny out of a urinal. My damn, a penny. We branched out into things like, oh, eating chewing gum that you find on a desk or on the ground. Two people using a porta potty at the same time. I guess that's not that gross, but that's one of the subjects we uh, we passed by. Uh, pooping and vomiting in weird places. Uh, this is great. We covered all those subjects. Got this text message, Josh. A listener says, "I just tuned in. Are y'all playing the Pine City Demo Derby Bingo coverall?" <laughs> <laughs> that is effing funny. That is good. <laughs> On poop stories, redheaded aviation Jesus said, never pooped around her boyfriend in the beginning of their relationship. But they went on their first vacation. She had to go. And she ended up clogging the toilet. First oh, day, no. day one. She said she tried to get the hotel to give her a plunger, but they wouldn't. They insisted on a janitor plunge. She could. Oh, <laughs> man. So they'll always have that story of the first time. For some reason, the hotel wouldn't let them do it themselves. No, they got to call didn't, the. Didn't trust her with a plunger. And I'm sure I'm actually myself in that situation just begging, <laughs> yeah. please let me do this on my own. I 70 can't. years later. Yeah. So how do you And I'm mean? sure even the janitor's like, let's give her a chance. <laughs> come on. I know she can do it. I can't have a complete stranger come in and see what I've done. Yeah, especially because she, she was held off as long as she could. I'm so sorry, red-headed aviation Jesus, but she said, hey, they're still together. That's good. You know, those those state fair bingo cards and whatnot that people came up with, uh, I don't those know, 15, they're, they're a lot of fun. If you see a, a little kid, uh, the, you know, a on, a, on, a, on a leash, I mean, you, you know the gimmick. That stuff can be a lot of fun. A man with aggressive nipples? That could be on there. That could be on your... <laughs> bingo card uh, for this upcoming state fair. Uh, Texts have come in. Gross things have happened. Gross things. And our listeners are nice enough to share them with uh, with us. Malort Jesus. Malort. I'm not sure what that means. Jesus. Uh, when he was six, he accidentally pooped on the floor at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he did his best to Eliminate the problem. He rubbed it around uh, with his flip flops. Oh, oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh. just kind of rub it into the ground <laughs> sure. a little bit. <laughs> that that tile floor. <laughs> Creaky bones, Jesus. One of the first weekends he met his wife, they got really drunk. Uh, his room was in the basement. The bathroom was upstairs. Apparently, she couldn't make it to the bathroom and pooped on his stairs. Then came back to bed. Oh no! <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> Well, That's did drunk. my duty back to bed. <laughs> I've never had it come out of that end from being drunk. <laughs> I I dated a girl who, if, if we were going to send somebody to the French Olympics this year, the Olympics in France, and in, in the category of wetting the bed, she she would be a gold medal winner. And I do remember a time or two where after a night of drinking, I would just curl up in like the tiniest spot of the bed that wasn't urine soaked because I was just too lazy 
and too hungover to get out of bed and go like lay on the couch. Was it always when she was drunk, or did she do it sometimes when she wasn't? No, it was just typically it was always drinking related. Okay. So you wouldn't bed. just jump ahead of that and say, "All right, if you're drunk, I'm sleeping uh, somewhere else." Oh, uh, you, you know, it didn't matter. You know, <laughs> it was going to happen. <laughs> Put a diaper but, on her. I know, but I. Oh, say, I see what you're saying. Like I didn't. I should have just proactively like slept yeah. on the couch or something. If you knew it was going to happen, if you're saying it was every time, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. wear a oh. diaper. Probably yeah, should. seriously. <laughs> sleep, have her sleep in the tub. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I would tell her, like, hey, like, hey, okay, we're going to bed now. Go to the bathroom right now. And she would, and she would still find a way to pee the oh bed. Oh, my gosh, you're like a parent. Oh, it was. <laughs> I also I also got involved in a bedwetter, terrible drunk bedwetter, and uh, I would just wait for it to happen. You know, when, when the two of us were hopping into the sack, um, she would pass out, and I would just wait for it to happen, and it would, and then I would... Go sleep on the couch. I would, uh, you know, clean up what I could. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't go too far. I didn't, I didn't make too much of an effort, but I would clean up what I could. I just knew it was going to happen, so I always just... <laughs> All right, you ever, you ever played this game? This, is, this got texted into me by Full Turbo Jesus. He said, the boys and I play this game at bars where we'll throw a dollar in the urinal and wait to see who takes it. <laughs> oh, that's kind of fun. No, I haven't done that. <laughs> oh. He says, one night the whole bar got involved. There was about $57 in the urinal and it ended up disappearing so somebody somebody took that 57 dollars i would rather take a penny over a dollar out of the urinal because at least the penny you can like wash off and stuff you know the dollar it's going to be soaked with the urine for a long time okay a dollar yeah. but we, we yeah. covered earlier that there's a there's a dollar amount where you a hundred you're gonna for, you know hell yeah didn't that text go on to say somebody tried to, he tried to pay the bar tab with it? Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh. Them out? <laughs> Apparently, the guy who took the money tried to, <laughs> yeah, tried to pay the bar tab with wet bills. And the bartender <laughs> called him out for having piss fingers. Why does this smell like piss, sir? <laughs> Porcelain Punisher Jesus peed in a display toilet at Home Depot when he was five. <laughs> I, I came close to doing that once. I remember my dad grabbed me going, no, 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 we don't do that. God dang. <laughs> oh, toilet's a toilet, Dad. <laughs> it's been a great day. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot. we got to yeah. shut it down. Ruined a couple breakfasts. There it's been was a great <laughs> day. One woman in particular, Mrs. Jeweler Jesus, uh, Jesus, excuse me, who said, uh, there goes breakfast, and I apologize. She said, it's cool. I'm trying to lose weight anyway. So we're doing good for the community. <laughs> <laughs> the 93X and FM Morning Show. 90. The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Stay cool with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Beat the heat now and ensure comfort all summer long. Their expert technicians are ready to ensure your AC is in top shape. Call and schedule a tune-up today at 612-824-2656 or online at standardheating.com.